As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 242, and it's one of our stupid, sexy, sponsored episodes where a listener of the show has said, hey, Quit fucking around and play this game and then talk about the game after you played it and you see how it works. And Banjo-Tooie was the topic of choice this time. Uh, I played the original Banjo-Kazooie a, a couple years ago for the first time in my life. Uh, we reviewed it on Remember the Game episode 81, if you're interested. And I'm, I'm a fan now. I really, really like that game a lot. Hot take, maybe. I think I like Banjo-Kazooie more than Mario 64. I really liked that game. And I've been meaning, hoping, planning, wanting to get to Banjo-Tooie ever since. And uh, I didn't realize... I did not realize that Banjo-Tooie is a little controversial. The sequel's a little... It's mixed. I don't think the consensus is that it's a bad game, per se, but they they changed the recipe in Banjo-Tooie from Banjo-Kazooie. And the new formula was a mixed bag, mixed reception, and that's uh, that's how I feel about it as well. I played it for about 20 hours, and, and some days, some sessions when I'd play Banjo-Tooie, I was like, this is way better than Banjo-Kazooie. And then there were other days, other sessions... Where I was like, I can't fucking take any more of this. I've been playing for an hour and I've accomplished absolutely nothing. It's just, it's a weird game. There's a much bigger emphasis on puzzle solving and stuff like that in Banjo-Tooie than there is in Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, where it's just, a you know, there's stuff everywhere. Go pick it all up. And when the puzzles in Banjo-Tooie work, they're outstanding. But when they don't work, <laughs> oh, ah, fucking Banjo-Tooie. Uh, so needless to say... I have a lot to say about it, as does Banjo the Bear, our mysterious sponsor this week from our Patreon, uh, who swings by to explain why he likes Banjo-Tooie so much. And then the Banjo to my Kazooie, former Remember the Game Hall of Famer Mark McHugh, swings by to talk to E and uh, why we like it, but we think Grunty's Industries is the biggest slog to ever slog. And uh, we'll get to all that in just a minute, because speaking of the biggest slogs to ever slog, it's time for another edition of the Remember the Game infamous intro. Dun, 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 dun. 
If you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Consider this your warning. Our intros are kind of long, but they're fun. We talk video games and stuff. I recommend checking them out. And they're less than half the length of the fucking opening intro video cutscene shit to Banjo-Tooie. Oh my god, it's long. Quickly, too, I just want to say, I know a lot of you love Banjo-Tooie and you're excited for this episode. When you get to the chat with Mark and I, we get the negative out of the way first. Don't think we're going to spend the entire time just pooping on your game. We got the negative out of the way, then we get to the positive. It's a very mixed bag here. There's some stuff about this game that drives me fucking insane insane but then there's stuff about this game that i just think is outstanding and i want to see a banjo 3e consisting of it so just don't don't get discouraged if we're being negative to start okay and if all you're here for is banjo 2e talk you don't care about the intro skip about 30 minutes you'll hear music you'll be into the banjo 2e talk but i i recommend this listening we're gonna talk video games and shit it's fun uh, i do have to get my plugs out of the way that's how we keep the bills on around here we have merch hoodies t-shirts coffee mugs posters all kinds of stuff rocking incredible art drawn by my man joe from 4545creative.com you can find all our merch at remember the game pod podcast.com if you're interested it's a great way to support this little show and of course if you don't do clothes i get it uh you can always just support us on patreon subscriptions start at just two dollars a month and you can get up to four additional podcasts in a week every second monday we drop purple monkey dishwasher our simpsons podcast hosted by myself and mark McHugh, where we review each episode and talk about them and it's fun uh every tuesday i have the rambling idiot where i talk about my comedy career tv movies sports life whatever else i feel like rambling about every friday it's game patch my modern game Gaming news show where I talk about the biggest stories in modern games, new releases, sales picks, etc. An expansion pass for my money, the crown jewel of our Patreon podcast library. It drops every Thursday and it's a different gaming topic every week. We do rankings. We look back at characters, consoles, franchises. There's some comedy episodes. There's a ton of modern game reviews. Uh, this past week on expansion, pi- uh, pardon me. Expansion Pass. It was episode 155, and admittedly, I've been very busy with stand-up comedy this month, so we snuck in an Ask Adam Anything episode. I thought it would be easy and take something off my plate, because I didn't have to write a script for it, and it ended up being one of the longest Expansion Passes ever. We talked comedy, food, sports, podcasting, life, video games. There's a little bit of everything over there, and as is becoming tradition, here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of Expansion Pass. Ask Adam Anything. Uh, Eric Christian, Eric Christian Powers Esquire wrote in and said, you crack me up on a regular basis. What made you realize you had what it took to make people laugh for a living? Were you always the funny guy growing up? Uh, I would like to think I was, I think, (laughs) I think some of my friends from being a kid would say I was annoying more than I was funny, but, uh, I've talked about it before. I I watched Ghostbusters almost daily when I was a kid and Peter Bankman is the single biggest influence on me of anyone ever. Uh, because I just love the way he always dealt with stuff by making dumb jokes and things like that. I've always been drawn to minus turtles. Like it's funny because you would think in Ninja Turtles, Michelangelo would be my favorite, but I don't know why I was drawn to Donatello. I think it was, I like the Corey Feldman voice and then just kind of yeah, the way Corey did him, uh, just kind of, uh, resonated with me. And that's why he became my favorite. But normally I was always drawn to like the funny character, the wise guy in the group. And, uh, I did always just want to be that guy. I don't know when I realized I had what I, I don't think I realized I had what it took to make people laugh for a living until I was making a living making people laugh so that's now available in our archives and this week it's expansion pass 156 it's the final expansion pass of the month which meant our topic was up to the community and am I the asshole came out on top if you haven't seen it it's one of the funner subreddits these days, people just post up situations and ask if they're the asshole, and uh, we're going to host a gamer edition. My Patreons will be asking if they're an asshole, explaining why they're asking, and I'll judge them accordingly. It should be a lot of fun. So again, subscriptions start at 2 bucks a month to get new podcasts every week, instant access to literally hundreds of ad-free archive bonus podcasts downloaded right to your phone, plus access to the Remember the Game Discord, which is around 1,000 members now. It's pretty dope. The chance to vote in our Patreon poll every month, the ability to submit comments to be read on all of our shows. You can DM with me and you get a shout out and get to hear me mispronounce your name like I'm about to do to most of these people. A huge thank you to our newest patrons. Alan Weber, Donkey Munch, Mason Ocampo, Steve Brush Threepwood, Don't Win Friends with Salad. That is true. Good pull. Longtime Lurker, First Time Player, Kevin Kellums, Dave Chikowski, The Amazing Donk, Cameron Hawk, Nick GC, Sergio Cerritos, Conway Twitty. We're getting some celebrities in here. J Trip 88, KK. Uh, IP freely and occasional gamer mom. Thank you all so much for the support and welcome 
to Remember the Game Industries, patreon.com slash remember the game. And to wrap up my sales pitch, 5% of our Patreon income every month gets added to a pot. We're going to donate to the Stollery Children's Hospital during my 24-hour marathon at the end of the year. And we offer annual subscriptions. If you want to sign up for the year, you'll save yourself a month's fees. And finally, you can find me on Twitch. We've been getting a lot of new people coming by my Twitch streams, which is very nice. Twitch.tv slash member the game. I'm on there whenever I have a chance. Come by and say hi. It's good times. That's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our patrons usually gaming related but not always and we call this segment blowing in the cartridge he blows all right he blows big time that's it honey get into the spirit Let's blow. Our first blower this week is Big Kid 782 who wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, I know you start off Remember the Game with the infamous intro, and you warn people that it's kind of long. My question is, do you really have people complaining about it? To be honest, there are some reviews I don't stick around to listen to because I don't care much about the game, but I always listen to the intro. There's a special place in heaven for people like you, Big Kid 782. That just, We have one person, uh, who Banana Bread, who loves to say, I only listen to the intro. They don't even care about the game talk, which I think is hilarious. Uh, we don't get very many complaints. Occasionally. Uh, we get the occasional complaint. If you go and look at our reviews, you get the occasional person who's like, ah, the intro, this idiot, ra-, hence the name The Rambling Idiot, one of our other podcasts. Uh, people are like, this idiot rambles for too long before he gets into the video game chat and stuff like that. When I, I don't remember what episode around I, it was that I started doing the infamous intro. I think it was, I don't know, somewhere in the low hundreds, I think, was when we really started getting into the the longer intros. And um, I went on a pretty big blitz and I've done it twice now over the life of the show and ask people like hey do you want me to drop the size of the intro because i can it's just less work for me i'll get rid of the intro if that's what you prefer and i'm not just saying like i would listen to the listeners because you guys are the people like you kids are the ones keeping the bills on around here i'll do what you say uh but it is it is a, a vast majority of people wanted me to keep the intro as is i've had a lot of people and i mean it legitimately i'm not just saying that a lot of people have said they like the intro otherwise i would have dropped it if people had said they didn't like it i would have dropped it so we do get the occasional complaint that's why i always try to warn people skip 30 minutes it's not a big deal uh we used to put timestamps in the footnotes people have asked me why i don't do that anymore now that we have advertisers uh those ad lengths can change pretty drastically and it would fuck the timestamps up and i never know what ads are going to be placed in because they rotate. So I've just stopped doing it. That's why I tell people, go about 30. They're pretty consistently around that 30-minute mark when we get into the video game chat. So the occasional person complains, but most people either uh, listen to the intro or have just realized it's really simple to just slide their little thing up their phone 30 minutes and and move on. And the rest of people just hate me, which is fine. I'd hate me. I understand. Uh, thank you, Big Kid 782 Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, oh, my God. Trambopoline. Trambopoline. I love that handle. Wrote in and said, okay, So here we are. God of War inspired Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ronin game has been announced as in development. I recall hearing you say on a previous podcast that a gritty Arkham style Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game would be amazing. But seeing this announcement has me just as excited, Mr. Blank. I would love to know your feelings on this. So uh, I don't mean to plug the Patreon again, but I did. I did break this down pretty heavy on Game Patch last week. I the, the episode was titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin the video game. And I lost my mind for a good 10 minutes on that episode. But to to sum it up in about 90 seconds or less. Yeah, if you have haven't seen it uh there's a new ninja turtles game in development it's a big triple a single player game despite um based on the last ronin ninja turtles comic book series which if you've never read i highly recommend checking them out you can get the full it's only five issues you can get the full anthology for like 40 bucks or 30 bucks or something hardcover it's outstanding basically it's set in the future three of the ninja turtles are dead the fourth one is still alive and is out to avenge the other three i won't tell you who it is so i don't spoil anything if i highly highly recommend one of my favorite ninja turtle stories ever so i highly recommend reading it if you haven't and yeah I have been calling out to the gaming gods to make a fucking big open world gritty Arkham style Ninja Turtles game for years. And I don't know if it's going to be Arkham style, but we're finally getting it. And they are saying they draw a lot of inspiration from the God of War series, which gets me all hot and bothered. I'm super like you can you can not in in pen in sharpie in permanent marker you can scribble this game into my top five most anticipated games and like i was saying on game patch i don't really play pc games if it was to turn out this game was pc exclusive guess i'm playing a pc game if they were to release this game on just fucking the sega saturn i'm buying a sega saturn i don't care how i have to play this game i'm going to play it now it's just fingers eyes toes knees balls and every other body part you could think of crossed that they don't fuck it up because this could be the triple a single player fucking outstanding turtles game we've been waiting for for so long i'm very excited i'm just praying they don't get it wrong so and again check out those comics the last ronin they're so fucking good oh my god they're good 
Uh, Kevin Ingham wrote in and said, as a former Calgary resident, have you been to Banff? It's definitely on my vacation bucket list. Uh, yes, I have. And for all of you, I get uh, not a lot, but I do occasionally get messages from people being like, hey, Blake, thinking about visiting Canada for the first time, where should I go? The thing about it is like, I've lived in Alberta since I was six or seven years old. And I, like, I really wouldn't, like if your first time, if it's your first time coming to Canada, I wouldn't recommend like Edmonton. I, I like it here. I live here. It's okay. I wouldn't be like, oh my God, you're coming to Canada. You need to see fucking Edmonton. Uh, I know Toronto and Vancouver are like the two big cities, Montreal. Like those are the big hot spots, and they're all nice. Well, I haven't been to Montreal, but Toronto and Vancouver are both very nice. Well, Vancouver is not. Well, all right. Well, they're both okay. They're just, I just they're too busy and full, but they're okay. Um, but yeah, if you if you uh, want to see some scenery, cannot recommend Banff or Jasper enough. The mountains here in Alberta, it's it's beautiful. I love actually Shay and I are going to Banff in a few weeks for a weekend just to get away. I love it. I love it. I would live in Banff. If the opportunity presented itself, because I love the mountains and I love being close. I'm not even a skier or anything. I just love the mountains. True story. Actually, if anyone wants to hear a quickly funny story, when I, I'm afraid of heights. And when I was a little kid, we used to go skiing in school every year. When I lived in Calgary, we would go skiing every year in school. And one year we went skiing and I got on the chairlift to take me up to the first stop to get off the chairlift. And I was terrified of being on the chairlift because I don't like heights and I was too scared to get off. And it ended up taking me all the way to the top. And I was like crying. And then they had to stop the chairlift to get me off. And then the instructor had to come up to the very top and like help me get down the mountain because I was so scared of getting up. So I don't, uh, I'm not a skier. I probably could handle the chairlift. I don't know. I, I think I could handle the chairlift now, but I'm pretty scared of, I really don't like heights, but I love Banff. Yes. I highly recommend it. If you've never been, go. It's beautiful. God's country. I love it down there. Uh, Charlie Guadino, Charlie Guadino. Sorry, Charlie, if I said your name wrong, so wrote in and said, Mr. Blank, listening to an older podcast, I was surprised to learn that you're not a fan of, D of David Jaffe. This shocked me because I kind of feel like you guys could be friends. I feel like you're similar, especially in how genuine you are in your content. So I was wondering what turns you off about the guy that gave us Kratos and Sweet Tooth. Uh, so I'll be honest with you, Charlie. Like I, I do remember talking about that and I will explain what David Jaffe did that turned me off, but I'll be like, I have no, I barely know who David Jaffe is. I had no idea he was the guy that gave us Kratos or Sweet Tooth. Maybe I knew that at one point and forgot, but the reason I uh, knew his name, the reason his name was in my mouth, I want to say it was an interview he did with Colin Moriarty over at Sacred Symbols that I listened to. And I don't listen to Sacred Symbols anymore, not because I don't like Colin. I actually do like Colin. And I know he's a controversial figure. I really don't give a fuck about anybody's political view. And I've made sure I've made that abundantly clear. I don't, I don't, it's not even that I disagree with your, I don't care. I don't care what your political views are. Like, keep them out of, that's part of the reason I started Remember the Game, because I felt like every video game fucking channel and podcast out there was pushing their political agendas down people's throats, and I was like, I don't, I don't give a fuck, I just want to talk about Mario and, and Sonic, like, I don't, I don't give a fuck if you're left or right or right, so anyway, point being, I know Colin's a controversial figure, but he was actually somewhat of an inspiration for me. Uh, as was the kind of funny crew as to why I started Remember the Game. And I don't listen to either of their products anymore, but I, I, I mostly just because I do so many of my own. So anyway, uh, to get back to your question, I, I heard an interview between Colin and David Jaffe. That was, that was the first time I'd ever heard of David Jaffe. And uh, I just thought he came across as obnoxious. He just constantly was interrupting and uh, wouldn't let the other people, you know, Colin talk. And uh, I just, he just seemed very arrogant and uh, a blowhard and I, I didn't care for him. So that, it's that simple. I, I haven't listened to anything he's done since. I have no idea, no idea who he is. I love Kratos and I love Sweet Tooth. So if he gave us that, thank you, Mr. Jaffe. Much appreciated. But uh, when you're on a podcast with somebody and someone else is talking, shut the fuck up and let them talk. How about that, David Jaffe? So no, I just I just think he comes across as kind of an asshole and I, I don't, don't care for him. That simple. Uh, thanks for writing in, uh, Charlie. Appreciate you, buddy. Dr. Link wrote in and said, uh, Hi, Adam. You've mentioned a couple of times that the Dead Space remake didn't really blow you away. Why not? Is it that the Resident Evil 2 remake set the bar too high? Or maybe you'd played the original Dead Space 2 recently? Cheers. Keep up the great work on my favorite podcast. Thank you, Dr. Link. You're my favorite doctor. Uh, yeah, no, I listen. Dead Space remake is fire. If you've never played the original Dead Space, Dead Space remake is the way to play it. I highly, highly recommend that game. I think it's outstanding. The only reason it didn't blow me away was I, I, I do think Resident Evil 2 remake is better. But I think Resident Evil 2 Remake is better because the original Resident Evil needs a remake more than the original Dead Space does. I think the problem for me with Dead Space Remake was that I played the original Dead Space for the first time in years. Um, 
I don't know, in the last four or five months to get ready for whatever, whenever it is we covered it on Remember the Game. Like, I played it not too long ago. And Dead Space Remake, well, great. Like, the original is still fully playable. So I kind of felt like I was just playing the same game again, just a little bit prettier. And I, like, if I hadn't played the original Dead Space three or four months ago, I think I would have been all about Dead Space Remake and I would have loved it. But instead I felt like, I'm like, I just played this and now I'm playing it again. It did nothing wrong. I think Dead Space Remake is, is a very, very well-made game. I really hope we get a Dead Space Remake to a Dead Space 2 Remake. Um, I'll go back to Dead Space Remake in another year when it's not as fresh in my mind and I'll probably love it. That's all it was. Was I, I was just, I'm like, I'm playing the same game for the second time in like five months. All it was. Highly recommend it. If you haven't played it, play Dead Space Remake, play Resident Evil 2 Remake, and play Resident Evil 4 Remake. All three of them are, for my money, those are three of the bars for remakes now. Are those three and Final Fantasy VII Remake. But we've, we've done that dance already. Yeah, where was I here? Mopey36. Adam, third time trying to write this. Thanks for the terrible mobile formatting, pa Patreon. Dude, Patreon's site nap fucking suck. Uh, Mopey says, I have a request of you in the community. Some of my favorite gaming memories were playing games with my best friend. We started back on the PS1 with Final Fantasy VII, and ever since we've gone to each other's houses whenever we had new games or consoles. For single-player games, one would play and the other would look up things on game FAQs to look up hints, and a couch co-ops and shooters, he'd always kick my ass. Best times of my life. We lost him in 2021 from a heart attack at the age of 36, and we hadn't hung out a lot because life gets in the way like it does. My request to everyone is to check in with your loved ones you haven't seen in a while and maybe see if you can spend time together because you never know how much time you have left with them. Adam, thanks for creating and fostering a great community here. Your talks with your guests remind me of me and my best friend. I'm very sorry to hear about your loss, Mopey, and uh, RIP to your buddy. I, I, I feel you. I, uh, I, I don't know. I think some of you know, but I, maybe not everybody. Last year, uh, we, I lost my uncle to a heart attack and he was in his early 50s and he was my youngest uncle. He was the youngest member of my dad's family and I as someone that doesn't have an older brother he was like an older brother to me I I, I love that man and uh yeah and I when he went I was like man I didn't talk to him enough so I don't mean to, to bring the show down but I just I, I anytime someone I can't read every comment I get like this kind of stuff but I, I absolutely agree with you Mopey and I, I just want to stress that to all of you like I understand I'm 40 now or I'll be 40 soon life does get in the way we don't see our friends as often as we used to uh, if there's somebody out there that you're like, man, I really like that person. And I haven't talked to that person in a while. Shoot them a text. I bet you they'd like to hear from you. And don't think to yourself like, well, they haven't texted me either. I've, I'm like that too, but like it's a two way street. Somebody has got to go first. So just, uh, just message them and just let them know, Hey, thinking of you. And on the note of the heart attack at 36, I went in for some heart tests just a month ago at 39. Yeah. Um, fucking take care of your heart. You got some problems in there. Get that shit checked. The heart is not something to fuck around with. Heart is the final boss. Heart is not something to fuck around with. Make sure you take care of yourselves. Uh, well said, Mopey. Good job. Uh, smooth Operator wrote in and said, Hi, Adam. Long time listener, but I only signed up for Patreon a few weeks ago. So first time writing in and it's genuinely true. I, I believe you, Smooth Operator. I heard you mention on the podcast recently that you will games into existence. I was wondering if you could do one for me. I'd really love to see a remaster of Diddy Kong Racing, or at the very least, I wish they would put it on the 64 games collection on the Switch or even put it on Game Pass. I'm really not fussy. I know it's never going to go to PlayStation. For my money, it was just as good, if not better, than Mario Kart 64 with it having a story mode and different vehicles to drive. It's one of the few games that unless you have an old 64 knocking around, it's pretty much a impossible to play as it's not available anywhere and the DS version doesn't count. I know you've already done an episode of Remember the Game about it in the past but I'd love to hear your current thoughts on it if you'd also like a remaster or if you think we'll get it on the Switch Online or Game Pass. Many thanks to keep up the great work. Uh, thank you Smooth Operator. Yeah, I never played Diddy Kong Racing growing up. I played it last year after it won a Patreon poll and everyone was telling me it's as good as Mario 64 and I'm like or Mario Kart 64 and I was like, oh, we'll see guys. That's That bar is fucking high. Uh, it is. Diddy Kong Racing is fire. I've said it. I think Diddy Kong Racing is a better single player game than Mario Kart 64. I still think I prefer Mario Kart 64 for playing with my friends, but to play it alone, Diddy Kong Racing is the better experience. Uh, do I think we'll get a remaster of it? Uh, no. I would love it, but no. Do I think we'll get it on Switch Online? Y yes. I would have said no until we got GoldenEye. But we got GoldenEye, we got Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, I believe is coming. I think uh, I think it's a lock. I think at some point we're going to get it. I think we're going to get Donkey Kong 64 as well. At some point. Because Nintendo and Rare and Microsoft is a little fucking menage a trois there where they're all in love with each other. So I do think we'll get it at some point, And I hope we do because it's definitely... If we get it, y'all need to play it. Diddy Kong Racing is fire. It is a great fucking game. It's too bad we didn't get more of them. I like that game a lot. Uh, and finally, before we move on, it's letter time. It's letter time. Izzy number eight 
wrote in and said, Hey Adam, since becoming a working adult, I've avoided buying any video game at launch because of the often eye-watering prices, even when I can't afford it. But the release of Resident Evil 4 Remake is making me consider reconsider my frugal ways. What's your general stance on paying for games at launch compared to waiting for the inevitable price reduction or sale? At what point do you decide it's worth spending that extra money on a game? Love the show. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Izzy. Uh, I want to make sure I make this clear. I'm speaking from a position of, I guess, for lack of a better term, privilege. I'm very fortunate to be in a position where I have the disposable income where if I want a new game, I don't have to be like, fuck. Like, a new a new PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series everything game here in Canada is going to set you back like $90. Uh, a new Switch game, I think, is 80 bucks. Is it 70 or 80 I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Anyways, point being, like, they're not cheap. We all know that, right? New games aren't cheap. And I'm very fortunate to be in a position where if a new game comes out and I want it, I don't have to go to the bank and be like, fuck, if I got enough money for it? Like, I, can, I understand that I'm, I'm in a position not everybody is in where I'm like, if I want it, I'll buy it. Uh, as far as whether or not I'll buy a game at full price, uh, yeah, if I want it, I'll pay full price. But I won't, I will not buy a game at full price just to let it sit on my console and do nothing. Like, if I don't have time to play it right now or if I'm on the fence about it, I'll wait for a sale. Case in point, Marvel's Midnight Suns. I loved that game, but I waited for it to go on sale because I wasn't sure about it, and then I fell in love. Callisto Protocol was my most anticipated game last year. I still haven't played it because once I started seeing the reviews, I was like, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm as interested in that now. So I'll wait for it to hit half price, and then I'll pick it up. But then other games, Dead Space Remake, Resident Evil 4 Remake, uh, Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, I'm sure I'll do it with Zelda. Uh, any any game that I'm excited about that I know I'm going to play when it drops, I have no qualm about plunking down full price. And I know some people complain about how expensive games have gotten these days. And to me, there's two... Like, if you're complaining because you're like, I just don't have that kind of cash. I get it. Things are expensive. The world is getting more expensive by the day and the wages aren't climbing to meet it. I fucking get it. What billion percent? And make sure you buy food and pay your heat and... Make sure your rent is paid before you're out buying new video games. No question. Um, but if it's not so much a, I don't have the money, but more of a like games just shouldn't cost this much. I'm sorry, but I have to just adamantly disagree with you. Gaming is not an it's not a cheap hobby, and making these games costs millions of dollars. And I and I'm sick. And I know I've said it, and I know a lot of people have said it. Video games 25 years ago cost more than video games do today, and video games today cost a lot more to make than video games 25 years ago. It's just I, like. I, I just, I'm, I'm floored by that. The amount of people that just think that they're overpriced for the sake of overpricing them. They know people will pay it. That's the business. They have to turn up. If they're not making a profit, they're not going to make games anymore. That's why so many studios disappear. So that doesn't bother me. I don't mind what the price of games are. And if I, it's a game I want, I know I'm going to play it day one. I'll plunk down full price. But if I'm on the fence about it, I'm not one of those types of drop $80 on a game to let it sit on my fucking PS5 hard drive for a year. I'll wait till I have time to play it or I'll wait for it to go on sale if I'm on the fence. But I don't mind. Yeah, I'm, I, this is my number one thing. Not just because it's my job, but it's just my number one... Pa like, this is what I want to spend my, my money on. Stuff like I collect Ninja Turtles, the IDW comics. Uh, those I wait for them to go on sale. Because I'm like, I don't need it right away. I'll wait till it's on sale, then I'll pick it up. I would do that with Lego if Lego ever fucking went on sale, but it never does. But I love video games, so if I want it, I'll pay for it. And I hope that hope that makes sense and answers your question, Izzy. Thank you for writing in. Thank you to all of you for your submissions this week. As always, I appreciate you. We got to keep this train moving. So let's switch things up and get into our Smash It segment, the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. It is Play One, Remake One, Erase One. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week I give our listeners three retro video games. They can play one as it was released, remake one as a modern game, and the third is a race from time forever. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one. We'll get there in just a minute. And this week I wanted to go with rare Nintendo 64 games because we're talking a rare Nintendo 64 game. So we got Diddy Kong Racing, Perfect Dark, and Conker's Bad Fur Day. And 30%. Said they would play Diddy Kong, Remake Conquer, and Erase Perfect Dark. Uh, let me see what a few of you had to say here, then I'll tell you what the right answer was. There was well over 100 comments this week, so I hit a nerve. Thank you to everybody that wrote in. Let's rip through some of these. Squiggle Bear said, Hooray, a 64 one. Plus, it's easy. I'll play Conquer. The first remake, in my opinion, was already worse than the original with censored swearing. Also loved the original as it was. Remake Diddy Kong Racing as it's phenomenal and a modern makeover with more features, online play, etc. would make it superb and erase Perfect Dark. I love this game with the bots and events and multiplayer and the single player was tight, but if it was gone, we'd still have its poor little brother, Goldeneye. That seems to be a popular opinion with Perfect Dark, and I don't disagree. I love, per I love, per I think Perfect Dark is infinitely better than Goldeneye. I like it so much better than Goldeneye. 
But like, if it was gone, it's not like there's no shooters left. Even on the 64, we still have shooters. So I, I get that logic. Uh, Matt Die Draws said, this was brutal. I'll play Perfect Dark because it already has a ton of features. It plays well as it is. I agree with that. Remake Diddy Kong Racing because a Mario Kart, a Mario Kart 8 quality remake of this game would be go hard. And Erase Conquer because I have to. <laughs> Thank you for playing by the rules, Matt Die. I will say, well, I think Diddy Kong Racing is the most playable of these three today. A Mario Kart 8 quality remake of it would be a day one purchase for me. That'd be fucking sick. Uh, Super Dad Bros Podcast said, I say play Conquer in its original unedited glory. Remake Perfect Dark on next-gen consoles with modern graphics and physics to do it justice like a Tomb Raider meets 007 situation. And maybe a hot take, but erase Diddy Kong Racing because Conquer is a far better game and a remake of Diddy Kong Racing would have a tough time competing against other racers like Sonic Team and Mario Kart. I read that comment partially because I haven't seen Super Dad Bros Podcast name in a while and partially because there wasn't a lot of comments where people had the cojones to erase Diddy Kong racing much less to erase it and say conquer is a better game i could not uh, disagree with that more if you paid me but i respect to the high heavens you're right to say it super that is a hot take super dad bros that's that's four alarm chili respect my friend respect cj noel said play diddy kong racing because i never have had the chance to play it and i'd love to remake conquers bad fur day this game was a gem with fun and gross humor as a kid playing it i felt like my, if my parents knew how vulgar and disgusting it was they never would have bought it for me i love that game and i'd love to see it remade erase perfect dark i hated this game or i didn't hate this game but it didn't tickle my fancy like golden i did the bots and weapons were cool but i just found something about it mediocre so for that reason i wouldn't miss it if it was erased the thing about perfect dark is that it came out late and people were so into golden eye and people had moved on to the playstation and stuff i feel like that was part of the like a lot of people were playing playstation i was I didn't play Perfect Dark until later on. And I, I think that some people missed out on the greatness of Perfect Dark, frankly. And Sideshow Troy, the long lost third Sideshow brother, said, play Perfect Dark. This game was next level compared to GoldenEye. Be fine as it is. Remake Diddy Kong Racing to do the things that Mario Kart isn't doing and Erase Conquer. A game filled with this much malarkey and cursing has no place on a highbrow podcast such as this fine show. Fucking A. Fucking A, Sideshow Troy. That, you got read just for that comment. That Conquer has no place on a highbrow podcast like this. I, that, that melted my butter. Well, give me, send me your number, Sideshow. I'll buy you a drink. That was well done. Uh, I'm actually going to agree with the majority this week. I'm going with the 30% of you that voted the, the winning way. As did Anthony Messina, who said, Play Diddy Kong. That game is awesome as it is. Remake Conquer is a fun game, but it controls terribly at times. It could use an update. And Erase Perfect Dark, because as fun as it is, I'm just not the biggest first-person shooter fan and could do away with it despite it being a really fun game back in the day. I actually agree with those almost for that reasoning. I also would play Diddy Kong Racing because it is just very, very good and awesome as it is. And I would remake Conquer because it is a fun game and it's hilarious, but it plays like you're controlling it with your feet. Makes me fucking insane. I'd remake it and just make it control good. And then I would erase Perfect Dark. Not so much because I'm not the world's biggest first person shooter fan. I'm not, but I do like them. I hate to erase Perfect Dark because like I say, it's better than Goldeneye. I just, I can think of like 20 shooters I could still go to to get my shooting fix. And I have no faith that if they remake Perfect Dark, they'll do my girl Joanna Dush justice. Uh, so I, I'm very reluctantly erasing it, even though I really like that game. That's it. Thanks, everybody, uh, for writing in. As always, I appreciate you. I'll tell you what I've been playing over the last week, and we'll get into Banjo-Tooie after pausing for a quick word from a sponsor. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog, Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work they can help you work through your issues learn to communicate better and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it i've talked to my therapist about my relationships especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much i was away from home and they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when i was out on the road uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs, and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com. 
betterhelp.com slash remember the game today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash remember the game. All right, what have I been playing over the last seven days? I'm done with Banjo Tooie. Uh, I'm still plugging away at Earthbound Beginnings. That's coming up in the next couple of weeks. We'll be reviewing that here on the show. I've been playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for a couple of weeks. That kind of accidentally fell into my lap. I'm really enjoying it, but it is also confirmed that I'm never going to play another Souls game. And before any of you write in and be like, you should try this one or this one, I've tried a couple of them. I just hate them. I don't have the patience for them. They just make me angry. I don't really like the combat system. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has got me hooked because the combat's not too bad. I like the story and I like the Metroidvania aspect. But I think this is as close to Souls as I'm going to get. But I'm really enjoying it. Now I'm excited for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Like now I can't wait to play that game. Uh, and then I've been playing Resident Evil 4 Remake, which is superb. We'll be reviewing that on Expansion Pass in a couple of weeks. Really enjoying it. Let's talk Banjo-Tooie. That's why you're here. Uh, we had a ton of comments. I like to let my listeners sound off about the game we're covering before my guests and I hug the mic. We had a ton of comments this week. And I just want to reiterate, a couple of you wrote short novels. And I, I read them. I appreciate them. I appreciate the passion, but I'll just warn you, if your comment is more than a paragraph, it's most likely not going to get read on the show. I just, cause I can't fit it in over like two or three other people. I'm just saying, but I appreciate the passion. Uh, Adam Blank still hasn't reviewed Mario Galaxy wrote in and said, man, I could ramble on it for literal hour. I could ramble on for literally hours about this game. The music's fantastic. The characters are great. The dialogue is hilarious. The worlds are big, but fun to explore except grunty industries. I love the bosses. I love the transformations. Dude, you can turn Kazooie into a fucking dragon for fuck's sakes. God, what a gem this game is. Play Banjo Dewey to eat to get instantly laid. Or to instantly get laid, pardon me. Oh, and Canary Mary can suck my cock. That's fair. So now you've changed your handle to I haven't reviewed Mario Galaxy. We'll get there eventually. I just have to replay it. Uh, I agree with most of what you said. I don't I don't like it as much as I think you do. I think it's good, but I, I I'm just again just to warn you all. Mark and I get a little negative to start. We'll come back. I promise. We end on a high note. Astro Alpica wrote in and said, Ecom fucking Bokum. I've been waiting a long time for this review. I remember renting this game and immediately wanting more of it. I love how some of the worlds were somehow connected. Looking back at it now, I feels more like a three-dimensional Metroidvania than just a regular platformer. You could quite complete every world you couldn't quite complete every world until you had access to an ability you could get in another. Of course this game isn't perfect, but I can still get jiggy with this solid sequel. Yeah, I actually agree with just about everything you just said. Well said, Astro. I have nothing to add to that. It was well said. Uh, Hazmat Tuxedo said, An amazing sequel to one of my favorite games of all time. banjo 2 is an excellent platformer that delivers clever level design, great humor, memorable boss fights, and top-tier music. One of the little things that impresses me about it is that it offers the segment replay option that I really wanted in the first game. Being able to refight bosses, play mini games with friends, and take on the Tower of Tragedy quiz whenever you want blew my mind as a kid. I would say that I prefer the original, but I still got plenty of time for a game as great as this one. I, yeah, I definitely... The thing about it... I mean, I'll get into it in a minute. I just... I could see myself playing Banjo-Kazooie again. I don't know if I ever want to play Banjo-Tooie again. And I don't hate it. But you'll you'll see. Uh, no, no, miss, no Miss O'Dan wrote in and said, Loved it. Hopefully Microsoft and Rare would get their heads out of their asses to bring us a Banjo-3E. Fucking agreed. Well said, sir. Well, No, ma no Miss says so dead. I don't know how to say your name, but well said. Agreed. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. Okay, we had, we had so many comments. We got to get moving here. We had so many, everybody, everybody's excited about Banjo-Tooie, as am I, as is Banjo, as is Mark McHugh. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to talk to Banjo first, the man that sponsored this episode, and find out why he loves this game so much. And then Mark McHugh and I are going to break it down in very, 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 very deeper detail. I'm going to cue up some music. And when it stops, we're finally going to talk Banjo-Tooie, which originally released in North America on the Nintendo 64 on November 20th of the year 2000. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go. All right, so as I'm sure I said during the infamous intro and all the other Mamma Jamma stuff that I do off the top, uh, this is another one of our stupid, sexy, sponsored episodes. And uh, joining me in possibly the single most fitting Patreon handle for the game we're discuss discussing ever, joining me to talk Banjo Tooie is the individual that sponsored this episode, Banjo the Bear. What is up, Banjo? How are you, buddy? What's up, man? Well, I, I love, I gotta say, first of all, uh, I love your handle, and I'm gonna ask you why you love this franchise. I'm gonna get like two seconds, but secondly, uh, we have another patron, longtime member of the community. Ba Adam still hasn't reviewed Banjo Tooie, and uh, this is your official notice change your fucking name because we're doing it today, and you have Banjo the Bear to thank. So, 
Banjo, before we get into anything else, let me ask you why, why Banjo, why Banjo Tui? Why would you have gone with Banjo Kazooie if we hadn't already done it? Or do you like, are you a Banjo Tui guy? So uh, to begin with, Banjo Tui was actually one of the first games I played on the 64. I was like a late bloomer kind of because, um, long story short, my mom wanted me to focus on school and they didn't want me to have consoles at home. And so when I would play the Nintendo 64, it would be at my friend's house. Tale as old as time. So. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, I played Banjo Tui first. I, I never had played Banjo Kazooie first. I didn't even know Banjo Kazooie at the time existed until I saw it at Blockbuster, I think. And uh, yeah, I played through it. Um, I did it by myself, which was a big win for me because, like, again, didn't grow with video games. So when uh, I would play video games, it would just be, you know, me like falling off the platform or just me not understanding how to play. And so uh, when I finally got a a Nintendo 64 and I played through this game, I just fell in love with it. And so uh, when I, you know, stumbled to your show and I saw that you hadn't reviewed it yet, I was like, dude, how, how come nobody like knows about this game? And so, (laughs) um, and then I saw that you did Banjo-Kazooie and was like, everyone knows Banjo-Kazooie, but I don't know if people know Banjo-Tooie. So I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to sponsor it so that it can get some love. So I love it. I like it. It's funny because I actually had never played either one until I started the show. Like I didn't play because I, nobody yell at me, go back and listen to the episode. I apologize. I did not like Mario 64 when it came out. I was a super Nintendo kid. I don't like these fang fancy dangled 3d graphics and this weird controller. And I, 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 to this day, I'm not very good at 3d platformers. I was like, I want my 2d. So after Mario 64, I knew of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, but I was like, no, no, I'm done. I've played my 3D platformers. I'm going back to my Super Nintendo. And then when I finally played Banjo-Kazooie, I, I don't care what anyone says. It is I like it better than Mario 64. I think it's a better game. This one I'd never played. And Mark McHugh, who will be my guest this week, had never played it either. And we have been talking about doing this episode forever. And then you finally kicked us in the butt and got us to do it. And I, I have a lot of opinions on this, but I want to know, obviously you love this game. You you have since played Banjo Kazooie, I assume, right? Yeah, so uh, I actually played Banjo Tooie again uh, late. I think it was late last year, and I beat it within like a you know I think like a month or something. And so then after that, I'm like, that's when I decided to sponsor. I think, and so then uh, I said, wait, like if I'm gonna sponsor this, I should I should play Banjo Kazooie, you know, and it's on the Switch, like the oh. online uh, thing. So um yeah i played it i haven't finished it but um yeah I, I would love to just kind of hear your thoughts i guess like you know through right now or like later um just comparing the two because obviously like they're they're two different games absolutely and that's like so i posted a poll on twitter a few weeks ago when i started playing this game and i said it's and it's and it's so funky dude because like one session i like this one better than banjo kazooie then the next session, I'm like, fuck this. Give me back the Angel Kazooie. <laughs> like it was my mind just, I couldn't make up my mind. Um, now that it's all said and done, I think, and I'll get more into detail when I talk tomorrow. I, I think I like the, I think I like the concept of this one better. Mm. I think I like the execution of Banjo Kazooie better, mm. but I love what Banjo Tui was trying to do. So I'm curious about you now that you've played both. Do you, cause they are, we can't help but compare them. Somebody was like, yeah, why compare them? No, I'm like, sure. they're attached to the hip. Do, which one do you like better? Do you like Tui better? Yeah, I got to stick with Tui. And I was like really thinking about like, is it because of the nostalgia factor? You know, because that's the, what I grew up playing. Sure. Or is it because like, is it really a better game? And honestly, I think it's a little bit of both. Maybe more of the first one, like it's, it's the nostalgia. But at the same time, like when I was playing Banjo-Kazooie, there were some things I was like, wait, this isn't including this game. Like I kind of miss this, you know, whatever this is from Banjo Tooie. So, um, but I could see why people really enjoy Banjo Kazooie like more, right? Yeah, I I think to me Banjo Kazooie is a straight up collectathon. Just it's like Donkey Kong sixty four, but good. Uh, fuck, I, do you like Donkey Kong sixty four? Have you played it? It's okay <laughs> if you do. I'm, I'm not gonna yeah, yell. I've not you. played it. No, I've not okay. played it. <laughs> You're good. I fuck. I hate that game. You're fine. Play Banjo Kazooie instead. You're fine. No, but sure. um. Banjo Tooie, it is a collectathon, but like they really try to throw a lot more of the puzzle. Like it's got some Mario 64 to it, you know, mm. where like you go into a level and you can see the hints and you need to figure out like what do I have to do to get this? Yeah. Mm. Uh and that's where I like it better. I just think, dude, the criticisms that everybody the big criticism everybody has of Banjo Tooie is there's too much backtracking. 
Yeah. And that's, that's what I've read too. Just, you know, uh, that's the reason why they wouldn't want to play it again. Yeah. Or that's the reason why they pimp, like would uh, prefer Manjo Kazooie over Tui. And honestly, like, uh, well, me doing some research too. Like uh, I watched a short video on YouTube from Rare that they talk about like behind the scenes, basically of like the making of the game and all that. So if interested, yeah, you can watch it or whoever is listening can watch it. Um, and basically they said that they added some a lot of elements that they wanted to include in the first game and the second game. Yeah. So, and, and I feel like because they couldn't do that the first time, they're like, oh, let's just put in the second one. And so the second one just ended up being like way too big. And so I think that's part of the reason why there's so much backtracking. Sure. And I, and I, and I it, totally, because like the first one, they have to develop the engine and everything, right? The second one, they've already got, the the recipe is done right now let's you know let's add chili powder or whatever you know like now we can just tweak it and uh -huh. um and that's where i go with it i'll get more into it with mark but like i really do like what they were trying to they were trying to not just make it hey go into a level there's there's fucking shit everywhere just pick it all yeah. up they were like solve some puzzles get creative use your brain where where i get frustrated with it is like i said i can bro like i, I like i can put in i could play it for an hour and at the end of the hour i haven't accomplished anything yeah. Because I'm trying to figure out what I have to do next. Mm -hmm. Whereas that doesn't happen in Banjo Kazooie. You're gonna find right, something right. laying around. Exactly. Um, but then, but then when you, when you have a session where you play for an hour and get five jiggies, you're like, dude, this that was awesome. You know, yeah. like, and those were, I guess that was. If I sucked at the game, then I didn't like it. When I was doing good at the game, I thought it was awesome. I guess yeah. that was the gist of it. Yeah. Um, anyway, I don't know. Uh, what what's your favorite area? Like, do you have a favorite level? Because I I'm curious if if yeah, because like, there's one I fucking hate. And I want to see if it's the same what you think. So what's your favorite level and why? Of your favorite area, whatever you want to call it. Well, I, I'm going to tell you what, what I hate first. Uh, By all means. And that's uh, Grunty Industries. I Thank you. Yes. What it's so stupid, bad. Why do you? I'll get into why I hate it. Why do you hate this level? Like, I, I because it sucks. But why, do, why yeah. do you hate this level so much? Um, I mean, I think part of that, there's different reasons. But I think the biggest reasons is just, it's just annoying. I don't know, like going through it and just having to go through like the five or six levels or whatever and like not really being able to like access them because like you can't like fit into it. Because like, for example, uh, there's some areas you can only access if you're uh, transformed into the washing machine. Oh. And there's other areas that uh, I don't know, something's blocking it or, or you need this other character, whatever. And so it's like um, it's just annoying. And I think yeah. the it's kind of boring. Yeah, Honestly, if you like, if you've I, never played, like if you've never played it, this ep it's it's like a giant warehouse, I guess, like whatever you want to call it. And it's like five or six different floors, and and like yeah, and like and like Banjo said, like every floor, like sometimes you can access them and sometimes you can't. And then you fucking finally climb your way up and then realize you need something from fucking the second floor and you have to find your way back down. Whoa, okay, all right, and and it's just ugly. And yeah, not it's, like it's... not like a cool ugly, just like a like a boring ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, agreed oh i'm so glad it, I, don't, I don't i don't love the fire level either but i'll get into that really later. i don't well, love that one yeah. go ahead why you you like it i want to know what you think yeah I actually know. i i really like uh so that level is called hailfire peaks yeah um, it's half fire half uh, snow yeah so it's kind of like alluding a little bit back to the freezy easy peaks in banjo kazooie but not really yeah um and yeah i don't know i just enjoy it i i, I just like the you know the literal polar opposites of like okay in this level you can only do certain things but it's all like fire themed and all these things and then the other one's like all snow and i don't know i just like it and like, i, like I, I, I want to make sure I, I do not hate it close to half as much as i hate grunty's industry oh no no for it. sure but i just yeah I, I didn't all right okay uh what's what's your favorite i think witchy world honestly the which one's park. that the, oh the amusement park okay yeah um i just like the theming of it i i like the boss a lot um and that's one uh, we'll get into that later i guess but um i was gonna say that's one thing i i appreciate about banjo Tooie is like the bosses or the boss levels um at the end of every or not the end but like you know it's part of the like the, one of the jiggies is behind the yeah, yeah and yeah. so um i really appreciate that um i i don't like how you get the jiggies i, I guess just walking in the world and like interacting with the different characters and interacting with like the different um scenarios like you have to going to but i i'm not a fan of like like the carnival game like aspect of getting jiggies because i don't know just 
one thing I just don't like about this game is the mini games. <laughs> I think there's too many of them. See, that's not... fascinating because I, I actually, it, those were some of my favorite parts. Were some of the oh, mini games? Okay. That's fast. But, but no, I, again, it's your, it's your, your time. Why? Like, so, like, when you say the mini games, do you mean like, like, um, like the 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 kick the kickball like soccer games yeah, or like yeah. and that kind of stuff? See, I, I actually, I, I, I don't know. That, it's, <laughs> it's so. This seems like a. It's you know what's weird, bro. And I'm not. I don't mean to derail. It. I want to go back no, to no, the no, thing, good, but like, good. what's interesting to me is that like. I'm not really finding a lot of people that don't like Banjo Tooie that are saying like it's a bad game, but the opinions on it are all over people. Everybody <laughs> seems to like different aspects of it, and it's like nobody just seems to love every aspect of yeah. it. You know what I mean? It's so yeah. weird to me. I I can't think of many games that are like this. That's odd. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. If we're gonna talk about like things, other things that we like or don't like no, about it. But... That's. I want to know what you like and hate about this game. I'm curious. Okay, you're well, the one that you're the one that wanted to sponsor this episode. So obviously, you've got <laughs> passionate feelings. This is sure. this is your Bart versus the Space Mutants. So I want to <laughs> know why what it is about this game. So by all means, I'll shut the fuck up for a minute. I want to no, know what no, else you good. like and hate about this game. Uh, well, you know, in, in tradition or, or to follow tradition of uh, remember the game, uh, let, let, let's shit on it first, you know? Yeah, go go nuts. What, <laughs> so, what, what don't you like? Uh, definitely like the backtracking, not a fan. And then I, I don't think a lot of people are. No. I mean, it's not that I'm not a fan. It's just like, I don't hate it as much, but I just um, like, I don't like it. The, but the, I, do I, like... I wanna, the concept of it is clever. Like that yes. you could go to one world and become... Yes a washing machine and then take that washing machine to a different world and solve right, a puzzle right. yes. on paper. That's awesome. Yeah. But it's just way too convoluted in my opinion. Yes. Sorry, yes. Go ahead. Oh, no. So I, I don't like that, but I mean, I do like, you know, like you said, the idea of it, of just like having to really think about, okay, so now I've just gained this new skill. How am I going to use this skill? Like in a level, I just like supposedly beat or whatever. Right. right? Yeah. Um, Or like just finish and, you know, pass or whatever. So, uh, I think the cutscenes are too long in the beginning. Oh, <laughs> bro, so were, were you watching the stream when I started playing it? That no, first now I gotta hour, watch them. <laughs> I was livid. I was like, when the like they're playing poker, then the fucking mole dies or whatever, and it and then the witch is back, and then there's other witches, and I was I was getting so pissed off. I was like, I don't need a fucking play here i just like like this isn't shakespeare it's banjo kazooie thank you for saying that fuck me fuck um i was gonna ask well because you played on the xbox right like yeah. the okay yeah. so i i've only played on the nintendo 64 okay um so in the 64 you can't like skip through them right you same. have to watch really same. yeah same oh my thing. gosh i would think that they would have like given uh, you to skip through them or to do something if you yeah. hadn't sponsored this episode and I wasn't contractually obligated to play this game, I might have rage quit in that opening hour and been like, I'm done. I'm like, this is too long. This is like I, Last of Us. Metal Gear Solid doesn't have fucking cutscenes as long as the beginning of Banjo Tooie. Yep. Fuck. Yep. Our but see, like bad. the difference between the cutscenes on, say, like The Last of Us, right? Because that's also a really long cutscene. Totally. Um, is that you're you're emotionally invested in it? You know, yeah. this is like you're just seeing these characters have their drama and it's like you don't care you no. just want to start playing you no know? like and like <laughs> the only good thing about the opening cutscene is bubbles dying and kazooie just kind of laughing about it i love kazooie yeah. so much and well that's well i'll get to that later when yeah, i talk about like, what, what i like about it. but yeah I, I don't like the the mini games or i just feel there's too many of them um i don't like the shooting part of it either like i like when, I it, like when it goes fps it. yes yeah yeah, yeah. Just because uh, I get what they're trying to do, you know, like they succeeded obviously with or rare or they succeeded with Goldeneye. They were probably trying to put that into their game too. Like, oh, like that would be fun, right? And I, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I thought it played okay. It just felt very like forced in. Like, just yeah, didn't feel like it yeah. fit at all. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, And then two other things. I think I liked in Banjo-Kazooie, you only had to worry about five Jinjos every world. Yeah. And then here you have like 10 in each color. You know, so you have like a hundred gingers or something in total. And and those fake ones can suck an ass. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm spoiling yeah. everything I have to say about it, but yeah, yeah. no, okay. there's fake I agree. There's too um, many of them, agreed. Yeah, so there's too many. Um, and then I didn't like how Jolly Roger Lagoon, I think it was called, uh, how that one was like designed because the majority of it's swimming, right? And you got to swim underwater. Yes. And I will say, oh, I, I forgot to put this in my notes, but 
Um, I do enjoy swimming in Banjo Tooie more than in Banjo Kazooie because, dude, Banjo Kazooie, like, Agreed. uh, I had Agreed. such a hard time just trying to accomplish whatever it was, whether it's like getting the uh jigs, the what is it called, the jiggies, um, underwater or getting the ginjo underwater, and you know, I, I I would die because like I couldn't do it. Yeah, and I had to like find myself like constantly repeating it, and it got to the point one time I was like, you know what, I'm just leaving it till the end. Yeah. Um, banjo kazooie but banjo tui like you can learn how to do it um in different ways you get more health and like so it, it's a uh, more like you know it, it's just a, a better um like it, you, you just leave more satisfied right yeah and, and, and that they, that they eliminate the air mechanic in that level to me saves that level like that yes. you can go and yes. get mumbo or whatever to put the sun mm -hmm. in the water and now i don't have to worry about breathing that right. that saves because like that's where i get frustrated is when i drown yeah. And that I that you can't drown makes it tolerable to me because yes. otherwise that level yes. would fucking suck. But yeah, that that's what I didn't like about it. Um, okay. And uh, but I mean, I I think I enjoy it more than that than I don't like it. So so what do what's so I mean, we've talked about favorite levels and stuff like that. But uh, is, is there anything else like is there a particular like power up or a particular transformation or anything that like that melts your butter? Like, is there something about a particular you really like? Um. I feel like the transformations are better in like the actual transformations itself, like in Tui versus Kazooie are better um, just because like Me too. you're able to do more and like there's actually like you're not just, you know, for example, in Kazooie, I think you had to be like a what was it a frog or yeah, you become like animals. You can be like a frog and a crocodile. Right. Like but I that. felt like there wasn't really any point to it. It was just more like, oh, you can now like fit into this small hole. Yeah. Like, yeah. Whereas yeah. like in Tui, um, did you get very like did you get to the end or I got very, very close. I got to like okay. the trivia part. Oh, okay. I'm, so, yeah, I'm gonna rant about later because I fucking <laughs> sure. But so, anyway, so go ahead. But so uh, I, no, I've seen um, like the transformations and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so I was just gonna say like in Tui, like you can turn into say like um a bee right in, in yeah. cloud cuckoo land the yeah. last like second to last level or whatever and you can I actually like... go ahead sorry oh sorry. i was gonna say you can actually like uh use you know the bee the fact like it's not just small but you know you can fly and you can like uh shoot targets or whatever and right. like it, it's just a little different that's probably a really bad example to be honest but, no no but you're uh, right like I, like i love that you can become like a brinks truck and then honk your horn. Oh, like, yeah. Open. Like, yeah. I love, like, or, like, this, oh, the submarine in that underwater level is a godsend. Like, <laughs> I love, I like, I agree with you 100%. The transformations are better in this one. Yeah. They're more creative. 100%. Yeah, yeah agreed. Um. Yeah, and, and like, uh, something, not that, uh, I guess it's not that I didn't like, it's just more like a preference. Um, Mumbo, Jumbo, or, like, his uh, role in the game. So in Kazooie, you can't play him. You go to him and you are transformed into like the different things that you need to for the level. Yeah. And Tui, uh, you uh, you can use him. He's an actual playable character and you can use him like to do magic in certain areas or like to do certain things that will help make, you know, certain things easier or just more yeah. accessible. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, for the transformations, uh, yeah, I, I just prefer him over Tui. I don't know if I have a, a favorite one. Um, I will say... Not a fan of the the stone <laughs> bench. Oh, just because he goes so damn slow. Like, ah, uh, ah, <laughs> uh, I, I agree. I agree. And I, I just think that those whole mini games, uh, I mean, I already said like how much I don't like the mini games, but just the kickball mini games, I don't know. Like the first time was fun. I'm like, oh, you got to do it again. Like, yeah, that, that it sets up three or stupid. Like, yeah, one and done would have been fine. Yeah. Exactly. But right. by the end of the game, there was stuff making me so much madder than having to play. Kickball. <laughs> well, I love to hear about it later. <laughs> oh, I'm going to, oh, buddy. I'm going to, I'm like, I'm ready to pop. But I, I'm not saying I, I, I like this game. I, I really do. I like this game. I just, there was things that pissed me off. Yeah. Um, Banjo, we got to figure out a way to score this thing. Okay. And um, I always like to give my guests a shot. You got an idea? I'm interested. All right. So I'm just going to, uh, I was going to give you like two options, but since you said you hated that trivia. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, only because I'm stupid and I'm bad at it. But what do you got? Well, I was going to say, there's a question that she asked the uh, Grintilda or Grinty or whatever, the witch. Um, and she says, what number question is this on my list? And they have like three different options. It's like, dude, how are you supposed to know the answer? Right. Fuck. Trivia. Well, the correct answer is two twenty eight. I looked it up. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So how the fuck would anyone know 28? that? Yeah, how, uh, how would anyone know that? Yeah, so, we'll go 228. Go 28. <laughs> I like that scale. All right, so out of 228, I got to write this down so I don't fucking forget. Ah, oh, man, you guys come up with so much better scales than I fucking do. <laughs> uh, all right, then Banjo, uh, this is the moment of truth, my friend. Out of 228 fucking dumb questions, how many questions are you giving Banjo Tui? Mm, I think I'll give it a 220. That's a good score. So pretty high. Yeah, it's a good score. Uh, no, good. I'm glad, you, dude. I like, I like this game. Like, I listen, don't be sitting here now for the next like four days being like, fuck, he's just gonna rip my game apart. I like this game. Uh, <laughs> there's some stuff I really like, there's some stuff I don't like as much, but but overall, it's a good game. And I'm like, are you anything like me where you're like, where the fuck is Banjo 3? And no, I don't want to hear him nuts and bolts, that doesn't count. No, that that is not three. Yeah, that is not three. why is this franchise dead? I mean, it's dead because they're doing Sea of Thieves and they make a lot of money on it, but. Fuck, yeah, I, I, I do have hope for it because ever since they allowed him to be part of Smash, yeah, I'm like, okay, so they know he exists, yeah, which is yeah, good. yeah. But at the same time, like you know, they didn't bring the the nuts and bolts look alike on, on Smash. They brought like what is closer to the classic uh, Banjo Kazooie. So there's hope. There's totally. hope I think yeah. that there may be a three. I don't know. I'll give it another like five years. Someday, man. As an F Zero fan, I would kill for that little bit of hope. So, oh, like, you guys sure. have something, man. Someday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. All right, Banjo. Listen, dude. It was uh. You and I have been talking for like an hour off air, but like, it was really nice to meet you. And uh, thank you so much for your generosity, your support. Thank you for your patience for how long this took. And thank you for finally forcing me to play Banjo too, because I have been looking forward to playing this for some time. Uh. So thank you very much, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. Nah. Thanks for having me, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining me via the blank phone this week to not talk Simpsons, but to talk video game. I feel like it's been a while since you were on an episode of Remember the Game. Now that you're Mr. Mr. Purple Monkey Dishwasher, it's my boy, Mark, former Hall of Famer McHugh. How you doing, man? I'm good. I mean, I'm always down to talk about video games, but yeah, we've just been chatting Simpsons for a while. Yeah, I can't. Re- I was thinking about it. And I'm like, I can't remember the last episode of Remember the Game you and I did. It's been I think it's been a couple months since I think it was probably show. Portal. Oh, yeah, that's dude. And that was the end of last year. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, dude, this is the first. This is my first episode of this show of 2023. Well, you see, the thing about it, Mark, is that like we can't I can't risk like we can't risk overexposing you now that you're Mr. Co-host of Purple Monkey Dishwasher and everything. I Like we don't want like I, I can't risk a Steve Urkel situation where you fucking start making appearances every week. And then eventually I get like relegated to the B spot and you take over. And that's what will happen if I put you on the show too often. I can't let, (laughs) yeah, exactly. Yeah. You fucker. I can't let that happen. So, uh, but anyways, it's nice to have you back on the show to talk video games instead of Simpsons for a change. And we're talking Banjo Tooie. Now I've already talked to, uh, ironically, the person that sponsored this week's episode is named Banjo goes by Banjo. So I've already talked to Banjo about this game a little bit, but I let Banjo do most of talking. I have quite a bit to say. I have never played this until the last three weeks or so getting ready for this episode. Now you, me, uh, me neither. Yeah. And that's what I was going to go. Cause you, and correct me if I'm wrong and I'm going to look like an idiot here, but you were the guest for Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. You I were was because Banjo Kazooie, yeah. that's one of my top five games of all time. And yeah, so people I, like for, and I've been putting off playing this game for years because people kept saying like, you got to play Banjo Tui. It's better than the first. It's even better than the first. And then I played it. And I could not disagree more. Yeah. And that's okay. And that's where I wanted to go because like, I knew that you, you were all, you're all about that Banjo Kazooie. You love that game. I hadn't played it. It's a perfect game. Right. And I hadn't played it until you and I recorded the episode of Remember the Game about it. And I have said many times to, to various degrees of shade from people. Uh, I think Banjo Kazooie is a better game than Mario 64. And I like both, but I think Banjo Kazooie is better. I love it's, it's, Banjo Kazooie. It stole the concept from it, but it also did it better. So Yeah, I loved it. Uh, so I have also been excited to play this game for quite a long time because it, it's interesting because, yeah, there are people that are like, this Banjo 2 is better than Banjo Kazooie. But then there's other people that are like, ah, it's not as good. I ran a poll on Twitter while I was playing it just to ask people, like, which one do you like better? And uh, it was about 65, 35 in favor of Banjo Kazooie. People like the first one better. Um, and I got to say, I, I want to know where you are on this. Like, my first oh. thoughts 
my first thoughts on banjo tooie are i'll play an hour of it where i'm like this is so much better than banjo kazooie and then i'll play an hour of it where i don't accomplish anything and i'm like this game is fucking stupid and it was like a non-stop i love it i hate it i love it i hate and i don't i hate the strong word but i would go from like it's way better to being like it's nowhere near as good depending on how well my session went I went right. from like, oh, this is pretty good to like, fuck this game just constantly. I never like at no point was I like, oh, man, better than Banjo-Kazooie because right. it was bigger than Banjo-Kazooie. It was certainly more bombastic. It was a lot more like ambitious. But it, OK, the biggest problem with this game is that the worlds are bigger, but there's the same amount of jigsaw puzzles in each world. It'd be like if you had like Mario Odyssey. If you had those giant worlds and each one of those giant worlds had 10 moons in them. Right. Like, no, I, it, I, I, yeah, I don't disagree. I like, I really do. I want to make sure I make this abundantly clear. I like, I don't like, do you like, like, I don't dislike th Well, no, I don't dislike this game. Whereas like I can see Banjo Kazooie being a game. I go back to every few years and play through it again. I really don't feel the urge to go back and play Banjo Tooie again. I'd say and, that there's a lot that I liked about Banjo Tooie, but like, yeah, I'm never gonna play it again. Yeah, I think uh, I think the way I could sum it up is I I like I like the concept of Banjo Tooie better than Banjo Kazooie, but I think Banjo Kazooie was uh, executed better. Yeah, like, like Banjo Tooie had the ambition, and there's a lot of things in there. Like, oh, that's a great idea. Like, I like that they did it like that this time, but it was. Like, it never led to a game that was more fun. Yeah, like, if you've never played Banjo... So, I guess if you've like if you never played either one by some chance, you control... Everyone knows. You control Banjo the Bear and Kazooie the Bird is in your backpack. And, and the first one is, like, a giant Super Mario 64 slash Donkey Kong 64 collect-a-thon. You're just going from level to level collecting everything under the sun. And it's fun. They're fun games. Banjo-Tooie is the same principle, but, like, there's a lot more emphasis on on solving puzzles like you get into an area and you can bring up a list of the 10 jiggy you have to collect jiggies these golden jigsaw pieces jigsaw puzzle pieces and and you when you go into each world in banjo tooie you can bring up a list of the 10 ba uh jiggies in that world and then there's a clue for each one like uh you know defeat the snake uh solve the the prison puzzle and you know so on and so forth and i like that because i love puzzle games and so when i first started playing this game i was like it's very clever that like it's not just run around and randomly find shit laying everywhere. It's like solve some puzzles and figure out how to find the jiggies and stuff like that. But then I quickly started to realize that like, like, so in every world you can like transform into a, a, a different type of like character or machine or whatever. And then I realized like, Oh, okay. So I need to go to one world transform into like, you know, this machine and then take that back to this other world and then do this to solve the puzzle. And what starts out as a great idea by the end becomes like a, you know, like when you're watching a TV show that, has like three billion plots all going on at once in a way that's what this felt like like i would go 100%. from one world to another world and try to remember like okay so i need to go back there with this thing to do this and then i would go back there with this thing to do that and then realize it's still not good because i had to get this other power and go back and open up this gate before i could go get this ability to come back and it's there's so much backtracking and trying to solve the puzzles and shit that i went from like loving it for the first third like by the end i was like i'm just done with this i'm so frustrated that i could sit down with my finite amount of gaming time and play this game for 90 minutes and do absolutely nothing because i've just run around trying to figure out how to solve the puzzles as you get into the later episodes i think and, the particular worst world was grunty industries yeah where, like, it was yeah, it's just like you were talking about i would like wander around for an hour and not get anything done and i'm like where is the fucking game like, what is the, what am I supposed to be doing? Where's the part that's fun about this? Whereas like Banjo-Kazooie, there was something around every corner for you to find. There was no wasted space in that. In yeah. Banjo, it was like, oh, okay, well, I'm sp supposed to somehow know that I have to go to this world to get this thing first and then come back here. And then I have to do it like, and it's like, oh, fuck, like, fuck, like great idea. But like, I wasn't, it didn't translate to a fun game. No, it to me it plays like like they like they finished the game and they knew what it was and then it, it feel like it plays like they didn't test it. I'm like like I get what you were trying to do and I do and I and I mean it sincerely. I really do appreciate the puzzle aspect as opposed to like 
oh, there's fucking three trillion collectibles in this level. Just every time you turn a corner, go collect eight more of them. Like, I, I love the idea of, like, having to get clever and solve some of these puzzles. But I feel like nobody actually tested it to be like, man, some of these puzzles suck. You know, like, and if, like, if they had just tried it. Uh, it, it, it and, and I also agree with you. And, and Banjo did as well when we were talking uh, Grunty Industries, Guntry's Industries. That, that is the worst. That is one of the worst levels I've ever played in a video game in my life. I fucking hate, if you've never played it, it's like a giant warehouse and you have to go through like five stories and then you fucking like, you can climb from story one to story five or like, you know, floor one to floor five and, and, and accomplish nothing and find and nothing. It, yes. Yeah. But it took you half an hour to get to floor five and you're like, so what the fuck am I supposed to be doing here? Like, where is like, give me something. Fuck. Like ah, Banjo Kazooie, the, the objectives were even when they were kind of vague as to what you were supposed to do, it the, the objectives were still kind of clear. It was yeah. still kind of like, oh, okay, so that giant bird at the top of the tree, it needs some caterpillars. Okay, so I guess I gotta go find some caterpillars. This gives you fucking nothing. Yeah. Even other if they're than in- like the clues on like the on the on the, the the menu screen. Yeah, like the pause menu. And like even if it had had like you know when you play Mario 64 when you go into a world it tells you like what star you're trying to get like and it's like one specific star and the level kind of maps to that. Even if it had done something like that or if there had been like um you know like cuz they kill off bubbles uh which we'll get into because that's actually one of my I both love and hate that part too. We'll get into that. Bottles. But like uh, part uh, goggles part of me right what did i say oh bubble i'm thinking i'm thinking trailer park boys like fucking man joker toy okay. no uh <laughs> greasy bastards uh no yeah right goggles part of me but they kill bottles, off goggles sorry yeah the, bottles bottles yeah bottles thank you yes i'm calling them bubbles <laughs> and goggles and bottles play. he's fucking dead it doesn't matter fuck him uh i know they bring him back but he sucks anyway um but like so they kill him off like why couldn't you have had like even if they had just had like they have like that drill sergeant mole that teaches you new moves. But like, even if there had just been like a hint station that you could go to that would show you like, oh, for this clue, this is where you need to be or something. You know what I mean? Because you're looking like I finally ended up looking up a walkthrough and I hate to do that. But I was like, I don't have time. If I had bought this game when I was 12 years old and I had nothing else to do with my time, I'll run around like a dipshit for 50 hours trying to solve everything. But I'm like, I'm a, I'm a man with a schedule and I'm not fucking around anymore. I am sick of doing... Nothing makes me crazier in a video game than when I spend an hour playing it and accomplish nothing. It's why I don't... And before everyone yells at me, I'm not dunking on it. But this is why I don't play games like Stardew Valley. I don't play Minecraft anymore. I, I don't play Animal Crossing. I like those games a lot. But they oh, are see, such I've never played things. Stardew Valley and felt like I accomplished nothing. It's always but, like, sure, but you like, know, I managed to like expand my like carrot section of my I know. farm, and, or and I, I, I want to put in some sprinklers, or okay. But I need to get this in there because if I don't, I'm gonna get shit from everybody. I'm not saying you don't accomplish anything when you play them, but like you don't. I've played these games. I've played a lot of Animal Crossing. I was a Minecraft addict for years. You have a good time with them, but like it's not like you're progressing toward like beating the game and moving on. You know what I mean? Like that's what they're there for. It's like that cycle. And I just, I can't play those games anymore because I have so much, so much to play and such a limited amount of time to play it that I'm like, I cannot spend two hours planting carrots or fucking building a wall out of sand and not really accomplishing anything. And I'm not trying to, I'm not, I don't even know where I'm trying to go with this. I guess my point is just, I get irritated when I don't make progress toward the end of a game while I play it. That's why I don't play a lot of sports games anymore either, as much as I love them. That's and fair. Banjo That's Tui, said, like I can play, I can play like Planet Coaster for hours, just building like theme parks and shit. Because that's fun to me. Sure. Because like, like the end goal is like I want to build a sick ass amusement park. Totally. Whereas and like then, if I feel like if you're playing a game with a definitive end, with a definitive objective. It's kind. It's really frustrating to yeah, like just be running around in circles, not knowing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Like if I, and that's I guess that's where I was trying to get with it was like if I'm going if I'm going to play a game where I can play for an hour and make no progress toward wrapping up that game and putting it away, I would rather play a sports game or a Minecraft or a Stardew Valley. Like Banjo Tui has a beginning and an end, and I shouldn't be able to sit here for two hours and make absolutely no progress toward the end. It's so infuri- and like, and, I, and we're going to get to good stuff because I, I do have a lot of good things to there, say about There this are game. good things to say about this game yeah, for sure. No but question. Like- it's just, it's so frustrating. Like, dude, that fucking goddamn volcano level. I hated that fucking level. 
I See, hated that. Was that was one of the level levels I actually did kind of like. Like to oh. me, like, working out the knots in that level was kind of satisfying and Until like you visually fall. interesting. But there was like some weird. Okay, there's one corner of that map that's just a weird red herring that I'm like, I don't know what the fuck was supposed. Like it feels like there was a part of the game they didn't finish and they left it in. Uh, there's a part where like you're in that like temple, like right where they play kickball and all that. And yeah. there's a uh, separation pad that Banjo and Tui can like they can separate at. And there's a whole puzzle that you actually do need that for. But, like, right near this separation pad, there's a wall that Kazooie can climb. And then you go up there, and there's nothing. And, like, I still can't figure out what that was supposed to be. Yeah, I don't... I can't remember. I mean, I I, <laughs> I can't remember that specific instance, but I feel like I had a half a dozen fucking times where I was like, oh, I got there. Oh, there's nothing here. What the fuck is this? Like, I, I yeah, okay. I, I just... That's what I mean. It just feels like it's not tested. It just, it's frustrating. Um, I, I find the backtracking fucking ridiculous. I, oh, and the other thing that drives me crazy is, um, well, I have two more big gripes. So like, you guys know how it works. We're going to get the, we're going to poop. Then we're going to do the happy stuff. There, there's, they teach you so many fucking moves in this game. And I can't remember all of them. And then I find a puzzle. I can't solve it. Then I look at my walkthrough and it's like, oh, you just use this move that you learned fucking eight levels ago that you haven't used since you fucking learned it. And I'm like, oh yeah, that would make complete sense. But also I don't, I like to get as much as I can out of a level before I move on. And I don't know about you, dude, how much time did you waste trying to get into an area or get a jiggy or something? And then you finally give up and then realize like, oh, like later on, you're like, I just didn't have the move I needed at that time. That but it's like I can. That was I half can... of the game. Yeah, and like to the Fuck. point where, like, I stopped playing because, like, yeah, when I play the original, I'll get everything, like, all at once, everything I can get out of a level before moving on to the next one. Yeah. Whereas in this, I stopped doing that because I'm like, I don't know what I can do yet. Like, yeah. I don't know, like, I don't know what I can and can't solve right now, just because half of the objectives of any given level you can't solve until you come back later. Yeah, like I love I love Metroidvania games, but a good Metroidvania will make it brutally obvious very quickly that like, hey, you don't have the ability to do this now. Come back when you get the ability to, you know, double jump or open. Like I've been playing a little bit of Metroid Prime lately and like, yeah, right away, like there's certain walls that are like, oh, you don't have the thing for this right now. And I'm like, right. oh, OK, very clearly not an area I can go to right now. Right. And I'm not saying Banjo-Tooie is like a Metroidvania, but, but in ways it is. Yeah, in ways it is. And like, fuck me, dude. Like, when I can see the jiggies and I'm trying everything I can to get it, and it, it, they don't, they have jiggies you can't get till you get future moves, but they don't make it obvious. And so you waste so much time. It got to the point after three or four levels, I started collecting the bare minimum number of jiggies I needed to open up the next world with the intention of once I've gotten through all the worlds and I have all the moves, I'll go back to the start and then do a clean sweep when I have all the moves. But then by the end of the game, I had enough jiggies to like get to the trivia, which oh, which I'll fucking get into. And I was like, I'm done. I don't even want to go back and try to solve all these fucking puzzles anymore. Yeah, it dude, just got I under 100% my skin. Banjo Kazooie every time because like, well, because like one thing, you pretty much have to to beat the game. Like you have to get like 96 out of 100 puzzle pieces, so yeah, you might so as well weird. get 100. But yeah. you also get a cool reward for like getting everything um whereas this game i was like no i have enough to get through to the end of the game i'm done i'm not yeah. doing yeah. any more than i have to do in this game that said if they do ever make a banjo 3e and don't come at me every time i bring that up someone's like hey there's nuts and bolts uh, no, nuts no. and bolts is not a banjo kazooie game no i want banjo 3e i don't want banjo kazooie nuts and bolts and screws and whatever the fuck i want banjo 3e if they ever do make a banjo 3e if I had to choose between the Banjo Kazooie formula of just there is shit everywhere, go get it, or Banjo Tooie's formula of solve puzzles, and be I would prefer the Banjo Tooie formula, assuming it was better executed. Yeah, because this game did kind of give you a little bit of a glimpse into what an open world Banjo Kazooie would look like. Yeah. And even like I know I've brought it up before because I think it is a fair comparison. Like when I first played Mario Odyssey, it just made me go like this is what Banjo-Kazooie would have been had it kept going. Yeah, yeah. 
God, I love Mario Odyssey so much. It's God, a great game. That. It's like the, it's it's probably the best Mario game, and all because it plays like the original Banjo Kazooie. That's yeah. why it's so good. Oh, I love that. Game. And it took him that long to catch up. Yeah. Oh, plus you can become a dinosaur, and like oh, I guess you can in Banjo Tooie as well. To be fair, uh, yeah. The other big thing I wanted to poop on was uh, oh, fuck, buddy. So when I started stream- playing this game. I decided to stream it. I was like, yeah, like, you know, come out, hang out with me. It'll be fine. That first fucking stream was like an hour and a half. And the first hour of this game is cutscenes and fucking jibba jabba. And to its credit, once that's over, then there's very few cuts. You don't even see Grunty until the end of the game. Well, like, and that's kind gone. of a bit of a gripe of mine because she was a constant presence in the first game. Even yeah. like when you were just like going in between levels, she would just be like, ha ha, you fucking suck. And then I'm like, ah, I 100%. can't wait to beat you up. But then, yeah, she's like drops out of the game until the very end. In this 100%. Part. And I, I like minor gripe. I would have liked to have seen more of her and her sisters throughout the game, like chirping you and stuff. Minor gripe. My major gripe is that if you've never played this game, that first hour, like, have your phone handy because you're going to need something to look. It fucking goes. And it's like, oh, they're playing poker. Oh, they're still playing poker. Oh, now there's a noise outside. Oh, here comes one of those Ninja Turtles fucking drill machines from the ground. Oh, here come the other two Grunties. Oh, they got the third Grunty, but she's like a skeleton where her ribs are out of her clothes, but everything else is in her clothes. Now they're talking a whole bunch. Now the fucking mole is dead. Now we go find the mole's family. Now we go find a Jiggy King. Now the Jiggy King is a zombie for some fucking reason. And it just goes, it goes, it goes. And with the exception of Kazooie being fucking hilarious in it, which is one of the good things I want to get to, that opening hour is like Metal Gear Solid levels of fucking cutscenes. And I'm like, it's Banjo Kazooie. I don't need to know the whole fucking backstory. Oh my God, they killed the mole. We need to go save. Like, just grunty's back she's mad and we need to stop her again we do not need people occasionally i'm sorry i'm getting wound up about this but this fucking scene went on forever some people get mad at mario about how there's no story and every week it's just bowser kidnaps princess and i'm like perfect i don't need a fucking story in my platforming games i just want to play the games I've you never give me a vague objection uh, objective and a bunch of fun things to do. I'm good. Uh, and it's funny. the same with Zelda games. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, Ganon's back and he's doing bad shit and you have to save the princess somehow. Great. That's fucking what I want. And then, but as long as the game is fun, I don't give uh, a shit. I've never been so frustrated with a cutscene in my life. I was like this and you can't skip it. You got to just watch the whole thing. And I'm like, just, I don't care. I just want to go collect puzzle pieces. Well, and, and I then, feel the, like I feel like this cutscene also scene... front loaded, right? Like I would have yeah. loved if they had like spread that out throughout the game. Yes. Like there's you... a neat little story in there. Like yeah, so like maybe if you had moved like the Jinjo Zombie King thing to like the middle of the game somewhere, that would have been like a cool little story moment, but oh. instead it's all at the beginning when you just want to get out and play. Yes, if you want to have an hour of cutscenes in a fucking Banjo Kazooie game, put them in five minute increments, tops. Don't throw an hour. Holy crap. I'm watching this and I'm like, I, dude, I was thinking to my, like, I was like, if there's more of this throughout the game, I'm not, I'm not finishing this. And then fortunately, like you said, once, once you get through the other hour, there's like none. But I don't understand why there has to be so ah oh, big gripe for me. It was so fucking anno- fuck me. It was obnoxious. I hated it. And then like the game itself, like I think the best word for it is probably tedious because there are so many times when you would like finish an objective and you're like, okay, finally, I finally get this puzzle piece. And then you get back to whoever it is you're doing an objective for. And they're like, oh, thanks. Now go do this other thing. And I'm like, Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. No, Fuck agreed. you, dinosaur in the cave. Yeah, although I will, like, when we get into the positive, I do have to say, that's my favorite world in the game, is the dinosaur one. But I agree with you. There's just, it's just it's a very, dude, my mind on this game flips. Because, like, again, if I have a session where I get seven or eight jiggies and make some progress, I'm like, that was a really, when the game is, when you're making progress, it's a really fun game. Yeah. And then you have a session where you don't do anything and you're like, fuck, I hate this game. It, it was it was so very yin and yang. It totally depended on how I did in that session. But it's not, and don't, before you write in, like, don't be, get good. It's not getting good. It's just, 
some of these puzzles are just, it's like, a am not get fucking goddamn the Scooby-Doo group need to be here to help me fucking solve this. Cause it's well, then you look up what you're supposed to do and you're like, how was I supposed to know this? Yeah. There were a couple like that, right? I had to look it up and I was like, ah, oh, fuck right off. Uh, but now is there anything else you want to bitch about? Cause I would, there is some good, I do want to get into the good. There is some good in this game, but if you have any, Oh, I, I do. I have one other thing quickly. I want to bitch about minor thing, but if you have anything else, the floor is yours the swimming in the one level it's there's a whole goddamn water level and to their credit there's only one real goddamn water level but fuck like it it gets better once you get to turn into a submarine but like they they didn't fix the swimming or the cameras from from the first game and that was one of my big gripes from the first game is like the swimming and the cameras and then they just brought it back as is this time I agree with two footnotes. Number one, it's funny with that fucking boss fight against that giant fish where you need to shoot all of its boils or whatever. Uh, you must be the fish that didn't know if it was a pimple or a boil. It was a gummy bear. <laughs> uh, shout out to anyone that gets that reference. But yeah, I'm fighting that fish and I'm dying and dying and dying. And then you were like, oh, dude, I, I couldn't beat it till I got the submarine. And I was like, you can get a submarine. Well, I beat it first try in like five minutes once I got the fucking submarine. I wish I'd known about that. Uh, I, I will agree. Everyone knows I hate swimming levels and Banjo-Kazooie is no exception. I will say the saving grace for that world where you're swimming the whole time is that once you get Mumbo, he can come and make it so that you don't have an oxygen meter. As if I was constantly having to go up and get my air back to go under there, I never would have finished that. That would have been it. At least they got rid of the the, the drowning mechanic. That was the in saving. That one level, still not, yeah. Yes, still not saying I enjoyed it because I don't like swimming levels and the swimming control still. Dude, anytime you need to control Kazooie and like fucking spear one of those see-through jellyfish it Dude, is it it's is... so weird why did they make her so impossible to control like, i don't was know that supposed to be like was that on purpose was that like supposed to be the challenge of it was it i i don't know i assume that they they got they caught some birds and made them swim in real life and they're just like oh that's how it works and they were okay. like that's how a bird would swim we'll make the game as realistic as possible because i don't know because i agree with you it's fucking you oh god the swimming is bad i agree but i just it it did make it a little bit less frustrating for me that i i I, at least i didn't have to worry about drowning but i agree i i didn't that level was frustrating swimming just isn't fun like it's just not fun i've ranted about this a billion times i just don't understand why developers want to put swimming levels in their games it's not fun i hate any time when you had to like fire eggs underwater was like oh this is yeah. this this is so bad why did you make this a game mechanic agreed oh fuck it oh fuck anyways uh the the thing i wanted to gripe about was uh my minor gripe because i understand they're trying to be clever with it i just fuck i i fucking hate the trivia final boss and i know that's not the final final boss i fucking hate the trivia games i but fucking it worked hate so them. well in the first one and no like, it didn't mark god I you and i it. We fought the then, and we'll one, that's fight like now. One of like the first one as a kid, that was one of the most that was one of the funnest ch- like surprises in a video game ever. All right, it's well, like, as an okay, adult, I've beaten you know, all these like, worlds. Fuck you. It's time to go get grunty. Oh, and this is how we're doing. Oh, this is so cool. Ah, as someone that is a lifetime loser of Trivial Pursuit and has only answered three Jeopardy questions correctly ever, I hate <laughs> trivia. I fucking hate it. I fucking. And then when I saw it, cause I was trying to avoid the spoilers. And then when I was like, are we seriously doing more trivia? You stupid bitch of a witch. I hate all of you so much. And then now, like, I didn't. The one thing Whoa. I will give you about the trivia in the first game is that there are times when it's like, Oh, you have to identify what world this screenshot is from, but it's always like super zoomed in and like blurry. And it's like, fuck if i know like that might be like the floorboards of a house in the mansion or it could be like something from the treasure world who goddamn knows fuck i hate it i fuck i was like i hate final boss fights so you would think that i would like trivia because i'm like well this is a nice alternative but the trivia fucking irritates me too i just i don't know fucking ah, anyways i just minor gripe i just i didn't like it uh, but there is a lot I do like. Uh, there's a lot of good about this game. Are you? Are we done complaining? I, I feel like we've been complaining a lot. I I promise, sir, anyone that's tough through, like we have good things to say. Have you I got anything else you want to complain about? about the game for sure? Yeah. 
All right. Then quickly, before we, we do the 180 and get into the positive, now's a good time. Probably a terrible time to pause for a word from a sponsor because everyone's in a bad mood because we've been bitching for half an hour. But let's take a quick break for a word from one of our sponsors, and then we'll do the positive stuff. All right, Mark. Let's. I'll, I'll. Would you? I'll give you first dibs. What a. Hey, give me a. Positive. I also do want to apologize. Like, if this is your favorite game, and I, you've just tuned in to listen to us talk about your favorite game, being like, "Oh, I bet they loved it as much as I did." I apologize because I also hate like watching like people talk like talk shit about my favorite games. But like, also, uh, a lot of great things to say about this game. Oh. Um, I think that like the levels were cool and imaginative. I thought that, like, I did kind of like the way that the worlds work together. There are, like, secret passages in between worlds, which I thought was neat. And there are a lot of fun, like, games in this game. Like, you go on, like, a spit, like, a flying saucer, and you have to, like, shoot enough targets in a set amount of time. That was fun. The boss fights are fun. Like, when it is clear what the objective is, this game is fun. Yeah, and that and like and let's break some of that shit down because like to me, where this game is at its best, I I love I, like I've said it before, I love the puzzle solving mechanic, and when when the levels are tied together, like when you because in each world, uh, you you can find two uh people to help you. You can find Mumbo, who's the the dude from the first one, the skull headed guy, uh, but unlike the first one where he transforms you into stuff, in this one you actually control him. And he walks around the world and he can interact with these like glowing pads of him and make different things happen. And I like that. And then I can't remember what the name of the girl was. Do you remember? Um, I don't remember. Okay. I'm sorry. I do have one more negative. Oh, that will character is extremely racist. Oh, sure. But like, this is 23 years ago. Racism. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They've like, I, I agree. No question. But, uh, I think her name was Humba Wumba. Yeah. I think it was Humba Wumba. I think you're right. Uh, so then when you when you when you find Mumbo, he can go around and, and like interact with things. And then Humble Wumba is the one that transforms you into stuff. I love some of the stuff you transform into in this game instead of the first one where it's like, oh, you just became a, a new animal that can like like Banjo was saying when I talked to him. Unlike the first game where you become a new animal that can fit into like a hole you couldn't fit in before. In this one, it's like, oh, now you're a Brinks truck. It's like now you're a fucking rock statue. Now you're a washing machine. Now you become a submarine, like you come to these crazy things. And then, like you said, I think it's really fucking cool the way that the levels are tied together, but you don't realize it till you get into the second half of the game. Like the the first world, I think, there's the one challenge, uh, the one, the one jiggy where you need to like go get the gold statue back from that like sleeping caveman without waking him up. And there's like locked caves up there. But then later in the game, you realize like, oh, now I've unlocked these caves. And now without having to go back to the main hub world and hike back or transport back to the beginning, uh, I can just take a shortcut through this cave and I'm back into an earlier level. And I can take my ability from this level and go back to that level. Or you can take the train from level to level and use that. Uh, I think that when when properly executed, that is this game's single biggest strength. And I, that's where I say, when I see it, if we make a Banjo 3E, I want it to follow Banjo 2E's footsteps because I want more of that. Just make it, it a little a really bit cool less confusing. Outline of like what an open world Banjo Kazooie game would look like. Right. Like you can go to the amusement park and you can get burgers and fries and the main exits from the level. The park, so you have to sneak them out. You're right. In most parts, if you try to leave the amusement park with burgers or fries, you get uh, you get them taken away. But then you can find secret ways to sneak out with the burgers and fries. And I'm like, that's fucking stuff like that. When this game, and uh, now we're getting into the positive. When this game is on point and dialed in, I don't mind a minute or two of puzzle solving or five minutes of looking at something and trying to be like, okay, what step do I need to take to get there? When it's 20 minutes and I waste my time running around like a dumbass, then I get irritated. When it's five minutes and it's a clever puzzle that gives me a sense of accomplishment when I solve it, I'm like, that's when this game is better than Banjo-Kazooie. Because I do prefer solving puzzles to just randomly running around collecting everything under the sun. So I agree uh, with you. When it's tied in, it's fucking awesome. And I think Witchy World is a really cool level, like really great idea for a level. A lot the, of the, fun. That's stuff the amusement park, right? In there. That's the best level in this game for sure. The amusement park. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I like that one personally. I think I like the dinosaur one the best. Dinosaur I, one I, also a really cool level. Yeah, I, and I love dinosaurs. But you're I and I and I I like amusement parks, but I'm scared of heights, so I never go on the rides. 
But I do agree. <laughs> yeah, those are two of the coolest levels. And you mentioned the mini games. Banjo, when I was talking to Banjo, was saying he doesn't. I'm not piling on you, Banjo. You're welcome to your opinion, too. Uh, but we, we kind of disagreed on that because Banjo didn't like those. I love them. Playing the kickball. I loved that. The one where you have to shoot all the fucking targets and stuff. I thought that was like that was so I, fun. Like the mini I, games I are a stuff. lot of fun. Yeah, agreed. I I really enjoyed those. It was a way to break up the re, I don't want to say repetitive nature, but the the gameplay loop and added something new. I really enjoyed that. You know what I didn't enjoy quite as much though was uh fuck. Now I lost my train of thought. I was trying to get to it before I I was like I could feel it disappearing out of my brain. And I was, oh, the, I didn't, I don't know if I liked the first person shooter. I didn't hate the first person shooter areas. This was like after they had made like such a splash with GoldenEye so that every single one of their games had to have a first person shooter, like multiplayer. Yeah. And like, you can almost tell, like you can tell what they reuse from GoldenEye while playing those levels. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I, so I, I like the first person shooter shooter areas on paper. The one thing I found frustrating about them was like, uh, like there's the one where you're in the, the the mines, and you need to find and destroy like the twenty TNTs in like three minutes before they blow up and bring the mine down or whatever. Um, I, I liked the concept of that, but I had to do it three times because I got down to one mine or one dynamite, and I was running around not being able to find it. I would have Dude, liked that happened the, to me so many times in right? every single one of those. I would have liked the first person shooter area better if it had just been like uh, fighting enemies as opposed to running around trying to find a, a certain amount of, of, of collectibles or whatever they are in that three minutes. I, I liked the, I like, I thought the first person shooter area was kind of a funny idea that it's like this kid's game and we've made it into a first person shooter where you're a bear holding a gu- a, a bird like a shotgun and the bird is your guy. I, I thought that was funny. Like, and I like and I thought they funny. handled well. And like um, it, they had they did it like that so they could have a multiplayer where you play against each other like that. Right. And I I wanted to ask you like I never I I played this on the rare replay. I I guess you did too. Like I never played any of the multiplayer, did you? No. No, okay. I've never like so sorry uh, to anyone when, that was like, when I was younger, I played the multiplayer, but like this go around, I didn't try the multiplayer. All right. So if anyone is like, oh, I want them to talk about the multiplayer. I'm, I just, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have it, it was golden. I, it like, like it was gold. It used the same levels that they did in the game. And it was like, it was fun, but it's just, yeah, that would be fun. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, but I did like that. I like the. I, I thought they were fun. I like the way it changes stuff up. Some of the boss fights, some of the running around in the first person shooter, playing the mini games, the fucking the genius puzzles. Because it's like, uh, oh my god, too. And this this is a good thing for it. I the only reason this is considered a fault is because I'm an idiot. I did. Did you? How long did it take you to realize that you could use the uh the mole's little uh tunnels? To travel around the overworld. Did you get that quickly? Because I I was probably 75% of the way through the game. And then I and I thought all those all the little like mechanical tunnel things were just like I could go back and talk to them and relearn a move that I had already learned in the game that maybe I'd forgotten about. And I was like, fuck, it's so stupid that I have to walk through the entire game to get to the last couple of levels. And then finally, at 75% of the way through, I realized that like, oh, these are fast travel that I can warp to. The- I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But I I, I always knew that. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I assumed it was me being a dummy. But uh, so when I realized. I, I could I was- be like, oh, no. Yeah, me too. I also didn't know. Oh, no, I knew. I was ready to come on here and be like, where the fuck? fuck is fast travel and then it turns out like oh it's right there it's right there it's it's it is five seconds into the game there's a tunnel you could use to travel around <laughs> so i was like i like the nerds in the i was like i withdraw my complaint like i'll and just unwrap a candy bar and just shut up fair enough that's fair uh because i do like the overworld in this game i think it's big and it looks nice and it is easy to move around once you uh once you find that fast travel thing uh, I yeah, but I, I had no- like that they used they reused like the overworld to the original game, but like tweaked it a little bit. Yeah, just I, so I, it's like yeah, so it's yeah. like oh okay, it's nostalgia. Like okay, this is where like yeah, like here's Banjo's house, but it's all fucked because like Grunty destroyed it, and uh, yeah. oh, you can actually go to Grunty's lair, but like there's just a giant book in there, like asking for cheats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agreed. I, I liked that a lot. Uh, I also wanted to say. I uh, I don't know if you're gonna agree with me on this. I think you will. I I loved the humor 
And I thought uh, Kazoo, like Kazooie was funny in the first game, like watching her argue with uh, uh, Bottles, the the mole. But I thought Kazooie took it to a whole nother level in this game. Kazooie is a fucking asshole and I'm all about it. I love Kazooie so much. Like she says some rude shit to people and it's fucking like the fucking dude right at the beginning when Bottles dies and then you go and see Bottles family and there's no like sugarcoating it. Kazooie's like, yeah, well, that dumbass is fucking dead like just just <laughs> laughing it up like ah he sucked anyways fuck him i love kazooie in this game so much i love that bird Kazooie's i want kazooie to get her own game for sure oh kazooie's a beast I, she deserves her own game i love kazooie so much and on the note of her having her own game uh i i like that you can split them up i thought that was one of the coolest aspects of the game that there's That's so many the parts where you can split them up because that was one of the things I wanted to see in the first game. Because there are so many times when I was like, well, wouldn't it be cool if you could just be like Kazooie and fly around this level and explore yeah, like, it that way? And they gave us that. And it was yeah. like a really neat, like... Like, I, I, like I, thought... I don't know if they did as much with it as they could have, but like... Oh no, they did quite a bit with it. Never mind. I'm fucking dumb. Um, no, they well they did. It's just like I, I thought there were almost too many moves where like I would forget about some of the ones that I had. But I thought some well, of them there were so like, many times when you would get to a puzzle and you're like, "Ooh, what am I supposed to do here? And then you remember like, oh, OK, if I just have Kazooie, I can do this. So you have to like backtrack to whatever the nearest like split up pad is and then split up. I wish they could have split up freely, like at any point. Yes. Yes. I, I, I mean, maybe they tried that and like found that people were breaking the game with it or something. But I do agree. I love the the splitting up aspect. Uh, but it is frustrating something like, dude, and that was one of the problems I kept running into in the volcano level, especially the winter half of the volcano level. I kept getting lost and I was like, okay, I know what I need to do now. I need to go find the split up pad, split them up and then take a zoo here and do this. And then for the life of me, I couldn't find the split up pad and then I'd find it. And then I'm like, fuck now, where was that thing I had to now go? Where to am I Kazooie? supposed to go? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that was where I was running into problems, but I do love that. They, I like that they brought back some of the classic moves. Like you could hold the two triggers and flip over and Kazooie runs and Banjo's on her back. Like I, some of that felt like, you know, it was like an old friend coming back. But then when they split up, uh, I loved playing as Kazooie on her own. And I love the, the mechanic of Banjo being able to pick stuff up and put it in his backpack, no matter how big it is. And like hauling it back to places. I thought that was a really, really clever. Uh, I like the move well. where like Banjo could like sleep in his backpack and restore health. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, like there was too many moves, but the ones that I used a lot, I thought were fucking great. And I thought some of the puzzles of splitting the two of them up were really well done. I do disagree with you though. I wish, I wish that, um, instead of having to find those two pads, you could just like push a button and have like, yeah. Have Kazooie jump out of this backpack. I don't understand. Like is, is Kazooie like glued into this thing unless they're fucking on these pads and then the magical spell is gone. I don't, I, don't. <laughs> I that, think it's I, probably what you said. Like people found ways to break the yeah. game. Yeah. But I, I but did like, really, I really enjoyed that though. Yeah. Me too. I, yeah. uh, and I'd like to see like, when they make Banjo 3, which they better be making right fucking now, that's a thing I'd like to see in the next one. The um, be, uh, other the thing ability. I really liked is I like the uh, Kazooie has different types of eggs she can shoot now. Yeah, I yeah, you know what? At first I didn't like that. I thought this is kind of dumb because all I'm using are the grenade eggs because they're the best eggs. Yeah, dude, but, that that was this, that was that was me too. I just yeah. used grenade, but I was able to find one of the secrets from like banjo kazooie that you can bring over to this game uh via the like swap and slot and so like you there's a secret area that you can find where you find like a magic globo and you bring it back and you can turn kazooie into a dragon for the rest of the game really i never found that oh really no that's sick. I think you have to beat like or find like something in Banjo Kazooie that then is like transferred over to your save data on Banjo Tooie if you're playing it on Rare Replay. Oh. And then there's a certain area you can unlock where there's like this magic globo that you can then bring to like the 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 woman at the hut outside of uh the, the outside of uh, the witchy world. And oh. yeah, you give it to her and, and Kazooie can turn into a dragon for the whole game, That's which cool. means that like she can breathe fire and also means she has unlimited fire eggs. 
That's rad. See, that's what I'm like. That's the type of stuff where I'm like, I know we were pretty hard on it over the first half of this episode, but like, it's such an ambitious game. There's a lot of good here. It's just the execution is frustrating. But stuff like that is fucking, that's really, I did not know that. That's fucking really cool. I didn't use any of the cheats either. I, I stopped, I only found a few pages. I never used any of the cheats. Did you? I didn't, I, I didn't either, but I didn't know that you like basically need the cheats to beat the game. Yeah, I, I didn't get to because the that last I didn't boss. Get to that is so boss. goddamn difficult. Yeah, I didn't. And I like didn't, near I the end, the trip, when yeah. you're like, "Oh shit, I must be getting close to the end," she's like, "Okay, well, I'm just gonna gas you, and if you don't beat it in this time, you die." And it's like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, but but I, I do like again that it's just more like, dude. Again, it's one thing playing this as a 39 year old with a limited schedule and being like, "Fuck, okay, let's go." If you had, if this had been like your Christmas present as a kid this game would have kept you busy until the following Christmas. Like, I'll give it that. Like, there's a lot here, and it's not a lot of fluff. There's a lot of meat that's frustrating to get off the bone because you can't just eat it off the bone. You need to go through eight levels and turn into three things and find eight moves to fucking do it. But there is a lot to this game. There's a lot to go through, uh, which, again, as a kid, I would have I would have played this game for 100 hours. And maybe it's I because we didn't play it as kids. But, like, yeah. I bet if you played this game as a kid a few times through and like, you know, everything you have to do. I bet it's a blast to play now. I bet you it is. Yeah. Like if you, if you know the game, like the back of your hand, I'm sure speed running it is a good time. Um, I was still having fun. I, I, I gotta say too, minor thing. I love that you unlock levels by collecting enough jiggies. And then you have to go back to that main temple and do a jigsaw puzzle with the jiggies. I know they're like easy puzzles and they're not hard, that but said, I really though, like yeah, that. that is something like they're jigsaw puzzles. We should be putting together puzzles with them. Yeah, I liked that. I liked once you've got, you know, 75, 80 percent of the moves in the game unlocked. Um, I that was, I think, when I had the most fun with it. I was having fun off the top. And then I started to get to the point where I was getting frustrated because I could only find like four of the 10 jiggies in a level and I had to move on. Uh, but then once I had most of the moves unlocked and then I decided, OK, now I'm going back to the start to do a clean sweep. Then I really was having a good time. And that's where, like, I just wish maybe there was a few less moves and a little bit less backtracking. Because once you have all the moves, I'll fuck around and solve these puzzles. I thought that was incredibly well done. It was the amount of time I wasted trying to solve puzzles without realizing I didn't even have what I needed to solve the puzzle. That, it frustrated me. Yeah, so, like, we saw, we said off the top that this game wasn't very replayable. But maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe, I almost, like, going back and playing it, it's way more fun the second time. It might it might be one of those games that's more fun the second time because you have a better idea of what you're supposed to do. Yes. That might, it might make it more fun, yeah. Um, I wanted to, so a couple last things, and then we'll start getting ready to wrap this up. Um, so we both talked about our favorite worlds. We both talked about our least favorite worlds. Did you have a favorite uh, transformation? That's a like, an, question. like a machine or whatever that you could, because I did. I uh, liked that you could be a T-Rex. I I like that the Bumblebee came back and I like that this time you can sting with as a Bumblebee. Yeah, I found the 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 characters you could transform into much more useful this time than yes. in the first game. Like a lot more ambitious. I uh I loved the submarine because once I figured out I could turn into a fucking submarine, it made that underwater level a lot easier. And yeah. uh, not even so much for what it did. I just thought it was funny. I really like the the fucking the 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 the, the money. I don't want to say Brinks truck because I don't know if Brinks is like a Canadian company or if everybody, but like the giant like heavy duty like money, money truck. transferring yeah. truck. Yeah, I uh, I just thought that was like what I turned into that because you're going through Witchy World and you're seeing these doors that have like a truck with a money sign on it and you're like okay well at some point there must be a way to get a truck to drive up and then when you when you get to uh her shack or her, her teepee or whatever and, and she transforms you and then you become the money truck and i was like all right that's actually pretty rad and you can like drive around and kill enemies by just running into them and like honk your horn and i don't know i maybe i'm just a stupid kid that like playing with no you know what that is fun I, but i, I really like that, that as well and i thought that that was like a cool like that was a cool transformation that I wouldn't have expected out of an amusement park level. Yeah. Yeah. I liked that. I like, so I like that you actually get to play as Mumbo. I will say that much like, remember you were saying earlier how you wish you didn't have to find those two pads to turn to, to separate Banjo and Kazooie. I kind of wish that 
once you've unlocked Mumbo in a world, because you have to find that little pink creature thing and then give that to Mumbo and then Mumbo can help you. But then like to use Mumbo, you need to go to his fucking house, go up the stairs, talk to him, then turn into him, then go back down the stairs, then walk back to wherever the pad for him is. It would have been nice if once you unlocked him in a level, you could just go to a Mumbo pad and hit the button and he would like, like maybe telepathically work or something like it just felt like busy work to have to walk back i love yeah, the, like i love the execution of it's just like for like backtracking after you've already solved a puzzle is never fun even yeah like even like in the very like, first okay, level well, i know what i need to do now but it's not i have to go across even with the teleportation pads it was still tedious to have to like okay i now have to warp to mumbo's hut go get mumbo get like yeah walk up the stairs talk to mumbo have what mumbo walk down the stairs go to the teleportation pad teleport to wherever the nearest pad is to the objective is and then go there and then do the mumbo thing and then mumbo has to go all the way back and then go back up the stairs and then you fucking get banjo kazooie back and then they have to go down the stairs and teleport back it's yeah it's a lot of busy work that yeah is so unnecessary yeah like i i have no i have no problem with having to find the little pink, whatever the fuck that thing is called, and take it to yeah, Mumbo. Globos. Right, Globo. I have no problem with having to find a Globo and then take it to Mumbo. Because they always put the Globo near Mumbo and near uh, the Wumba Bumba, um, whatever her Humba name was. Wumba, I think. Yeah, like they always were close by. It wasn't really that hard to find them. But it would have been nice if once you found them, instead of having to walk back and forth to their fucking homes every time, you could just... When I see a Mumbo pad in the level... Once I've unlocked him, just let me step on the pad as Banjo Kazooie and call back to Mumbo and like have him like, dude, you can do like some funky thing where he does like witchery, witchcraftery, where he like takes over, you know, Banjo's mind and makes Banjo cast the spell. You know what I mean? Like as opposed to like, there's no like puzzle, playing. there's no puzzle solving in the in, in making me walk two minutes across the map just to go to his house to turn into him to walk two minutes back across the map to use his ability on this pad to walk two minutes back to get banjo to walk two minutes back dude the fucking ice level where you need to you need to have mumbo to uh wake up the the dead alien then the dead alien is like save my three aliens then you need to be, go become banjo and kazooie to smash through the ice to get to the alien then you need to go back and become mumbo to come back to wake up the alien and it was like, why? Like, this is, come on now. Come on And, like, now. playing as Mumbo never added any gameplay. Like, No, which frustrated me because... Like, it, being Mumbo, like, it was cool he had an attack move, but, like, playing as Mumbo never added anything. Where you're right. Like, you could have just, like, stood on a Mumbo pad and, like, oh, okay, now Mumbo will come and do the thing he needs to do. And it would have been served just as much purpose to the game as being able to play as Mumbo. Cause I liked, I liked like, I love the interaction of Mumbo. Like it's more fun to have him using his, like his, every time he casts one of his spells, he's like, I hope this works. And then just crazy shit happens. And I love that. I thought that was great. It was just the, the fucking repetitive nature of making it work. That frustrated me. Um, yeah. And that's, and that's, I think like, that's the crux of the game as a whole. It's that's just, what I was like, just going to say. Too much backtracking way too much. Like puzzles were way too tedious uh the, the spaces were too big for how many objectives they gave you yeah yeah and like and that's kind of like as we start to wrap it up that's exactly what i was thinking like it just that is like that would be like the slogan on the box of like when it works it's great because like when it's when everything like when it's when it's working it is a really fun video game and then and like, there is and, something satisfying to like working out like some totally. of the knots of these like challenges, but like there's way too much that you have to do before then. That's not yeah. as fun. Yeah. But I, but you, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. We're just, yeah. Agreed. hundred percent. That's it. Um, cool game though. I like, I'm not, I certainly did not sour me on the banjo Kazooie franchise. I want a banjo. I, it makes me want a banjo three even more. Because I'd like to see what they could do if they took the best of both of the first two games and made a new one. And I'm like, like did something like modern and kind of cool. Like Yeah. And and I think they had to do something different with Banjo Tooie. Because if they had just done Banjo Kazooie again, like here's eight more levels full of collectibles, go get them. Uh like which I will ask you, because I would not have I I would I would prefer Banjo Tooie be what it is over just being more of Banjo Kazooie. Would you have preferred it to just have been more like Banjo Kazooie? 
Yeah. I like think less so. puzzles and just random collectibles. Like there everywhere. was a little bit of backtracking in Banjo Kazooie that you had to do, and like I don't, I didn't necessarily hate it when they when like when it was because they made it very clear like okay you can't do this thing yet until you do this get this in in another world. Right. But I would have liked it better if it was a little bit more like that, like maybe one or two objectives in uh like in the odd world here and there that like, Oh, okay. I'm going to have to come back later with another thing. But like, if you do it, but then if you miss the thing, like it's not necessary to go back to get it. Yeah. Whereas like this game is mostly backtracking. It is. Oh God. It's a lot of backtracking. Um, Oh, okay. So we're done. I want to, I want to score this thing and, and we'll get on with our lives. I did it. What are those? What are the names? I'm drawing a blank. Those little, randomly colored fucking characters jinjos jinjos uh fuck the fake jinjos dude the, because dude. they were everywhere and they, i know like, they and they fooled me every goddamn time the jinjos ah like and you'd get so excited because you'd be like oh my god i found a jinjo and you fucking go through like a two minute hike to get to it only for it to like electric like the little like zzz, zzz, and they start running at you for fuck's ah, sake. fuck you because i ah fuck ah fuck fuck you anyways all right we're done I, I, if if we were more negative than positive, it's because in my opinion, like there's more to like the the good is just better banjo kazooie. The bad is, well, you've heard it. Um, over <laughs> overall though, I like this game. So the scale we're gonna score it on, and I apologize if I get the terminology wrong, uh, because it's been a few days since I talked to banjo. But banjo had recommended there was a question on uh, on Grunty's question list that was what number question is this on my list or something and it, and it was impossible to know and i guess it was number 228 so he wanted to score it out of 228 which i think is a fully perfectly reasonable scale um so mark i'll ask you you're the guest out of 228 what are you scoring banjo tui i'm giving it a 120 it's like it's a pass, but like just barely. I was gonna, I was like, dude, I just thought, I'm like, dude, that's a fail, but that's just my bad at math. I'm like, yeah, you're right, that is a pass. Okay, uh, yeah, all right, I, yeah, I'm probably, I'm gonna give it like a one sixty five, one seventy. I'll go one seventy. I would give it like a seven out of ten. Like it's, it's a good game. I didn't hate pl- the old dude. The only reason I, I. I I don't want to say I don't like this game. The only thing about this game that frustrated me was when I would play for an hour and not accomplish anything. As long as Which at the end of my session, to me. Agree, me too. But like, even if I spent 45 minutes accomplishing nothing and then at the very end of that hour, all the pieces fell into place and I got a couple of jiggies, I was good. Like, I was happy. When, when I was accomplishing something, I was having a lot of fun with this game. It was just when nothing was happening that I was getting sour. But I, I, I like what it was trying to do. I, I don't think it's a terrible game. I think if you're listening to this, and you played Banjo Kazooie and you've never gotten around to Banjo Tooie, it is worth trying. I don't think it's on the Switch Online right now. I bet you it will be. It um, will be eventually, yeah. Yeah. But I think right now it's uh it's only on rare replay or else. Well, you know, you all know the other ways to play it. Um, I played it on rare <laughs> replay. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it, but I played it on rare replay and, and it played really good. It feels good with an Xbox controller. Played well, very nice to look at, very bright pretty looking game uh just you know have a cup of coffee ready for the first hour because otherwise you might fall asleep because it's gonna fucking talk a lot fuck me it talks a lot um yeah good stuff i think i got nothing else you got anything else i think we're done yeah i think i think i've said all i need to say that was good that was a good episode all right uh well then mark thanks for doing this buddy and uh i guess i'll talk to you in a couple of days when we record the next purple monkey dishwasher or we're doing the draft tomorrow night oh yeah right oh shh that's supposed to be a secret. Okay, well, let it. Oh, it doesn't matter. No, I don't think it is. Actually, I told everybody. You're right. It's not a secret at all. I was gonna make <laughs> it a secret, and then I posted about it everywhere. So never mind. It's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're recording our Super Nintendo draft for Expansion Pass, and Mark has what pick do you have? Second. Yeah, I have second yeah. place. So I'm, so I'm not one of the big ones. Yeah, I'm not gonna say what game you're gonna take, but uh, I'm excited. Are you? Are you? I'm fucking. I'm super stoked for that Super Nintendo draft, buddy. Are you? Are you doing any homework? Are you like sitting around just like? papers all across your fucking kitchen table trying to like map this thing yeah out. i'm gonna put it i probably won't like have like papers across the table but i'll like put together a list of like okay if someone chooses this is i'll take this or like it's dude it's in, like 
I'm, I promise we're going to wrap this episode up, everybody. But like the NES draft was fun. But I think by about the eighth or ninth pick, like the heavy hitters were gone. And then we were into like, you know, going to the ju- the genres and stuff you like. Whereas like you look at the Super Nintendo roster and you got Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, the three Donkey Kong games, the Final Fantasies, Chrono Trigger, The Legend of Zelda, like Earthbound, Mario RPG, Mario Kart. It's just, it's going to be fucking insanity, buddy. I can't wait for this episode. Oh my God, it's going to be sick. Anyways, yeah, that's that's for then. We'll do that later. Perfect. Uh buddy, thanks for doing this as always, man. You are you're the you're the kazooie. You you're banjo. I think I'm more of an asshole than you, so I would say I'm the kazooie to your banjo. <laughs> uh but you're uh, you're the you're the bear to my bird, buddy. Thanks for doing this. Oh, thank you. That sounded kind of weird, but I'll I'll end it on that. I like that. <laughs> and that's going to do it for this week's episode uh banjo thank you so much for your support and your generosity and for sponsoring this game and your patience and waiting for how long it took me to get to it and for making me finally play banjo two week because i'm glad even if i didn't love it i liked it and i'm glad i finally played it and of course Mark McHugh, thank you so much for giving me a call and talking a little banjo to me, buddy. As always, I very much appreciate it. And of course, of course, thank you very much for listening. Because if you're hearing my words right now, whether this was your first Remember the Game or your 242nd, thank you for the support. I appreciate it more than you could ever possibly know. Uh, if you didn't hate this show, leave us a good review, would you? It's been a while since we got some good reviews. I'm not sure what they accomplish. But I know the other shows ask for them, so I'm going to ask for them as well. And uh, if you want more of these, I got you covered. Go to patreon.com slash remember the game. There are hundreds of bonus podcasts with up to four additional episodes waiting for you each week, depending on your subscription level and all that kind of stuff. Subs started as little as just two bucks a month, and you get so much value. It's insane. Patreon.com slash remember the game. I'm also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash member the game, not remember, member the game. Uh, whenever I have time to get on there, so come by and say hi and see my dumb face. It's usually a good time. And I have a P.O. box. You can find the address at rememberthegamepodcast.com. I'm not asking you to send me anything big. Just little, just postcards, letters. Let me know where you're listening. I'll send you one back. We'll be friends. It's good times. Uh, that's it. I'm going to thank some patrons and get the hell out of here. I will be back for all of our patrons tomorrow with Expansion Pass, where we'll be doing MIV Asshole Gamer Edition. We have a huge week of podcasts lined up. Listen to this. Tomorrow, MIV Asshole Gamer Edition. Friday, Game Patch. We'll talk about all the biggest news in gaming. Monday, Purple Monkey Dishwasher Episode 3, where Mark McHugh and I review Homer's Odyssey from Season 1 of The Simpsons. Tuesday, The Rambling Idiot, where I'll just probably be reviewing WrestleMania. Wednesday, a week from right now, remember the game 243? I'm going to be interviewing Stuttering Craig, formerly of ScrewAttack.com fame, and finding out what he's up to now, what it was like to be there for the highs and lows of ScrewAttack. I'm really, really looking forward to that. And then next Thursday... One of the most anticipated episodes of Expansion Pass we have ever done. It is our SNES draft. We did an NES draft in the fall. Instantly became a top five all-time most beloved episode of Expansion Pass. The guys are back. Four of my regular guests are going to be up and they're drafting 10 Super Nintendo games each. Fantasy football style. And then our patrons will be voting for who drafted the best lineup. We recorded it last night. It was so much fun. I think you're all going to love it. So massive week of podcasts here at Remember the Game Industries. I hope you all enjoy it. Okay, I got to thank some patrons and leave. Thanks so much for the support, everybody. Talk to you again on the next one. Cheers. So long. Goodbye. Remember the Game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not puke up all the content I turn out every week without all of your support. The following people are at the Senior Executive Vice President level or higher at patreon.com slash remember the game. And as such, I'm contractually obligated to rip through their names as quickly as possible. So a huge thank you to... Makeshift Mallow, Magic Money, Joe Buck, Sharonic, Andre, The Keegs, James Clark, Dave McGee, D- Dan of DNA Gaming, Slick Rick, Doug Dorn, Chris Fleury, Andrew Wright, Jordan, Fraser Burns, Angry Ticks, Dave Thompson, No One Cares, Scott Brooks, Aaron Lawson, Nathan Trombley, A Town Morgan, Zane Donovan, Ryan Kinchin, Mike Maloney, G9 PSX, Mercury869, Wolfgang, Darren, Sam Wright, Andy Hudson, Doogie, Wolf Magic 21, Johnny CCDC, Joel LeBlanc, Squints, Titan 420, Zonko 504, Russell Aldridge, Jeff Bergeron, Captain N, OT Plays Games, Daniel, Tunable Power, John Woodruff, Randy Baird, Just a Fish, Poop Q, Super Dad Bros Podcast, and 
Gonzalo, Holmes, Zach Shepard, Balsack, T-Bagger, Chris Dickin, Frosty, Fee 492, Triple Chucker 22, Elijah Burns, Stephen Parnell, Welsh Destroyer, Ray Sen, Wontonga, Zach Coiner, DBXJ, Jameer Williams, Steve Dalk, Mizuru, Jacob Adams, Phil Lencher, Joe the Sandman, Ruben Elizald, Eric James, Jake Carter, Thomas Childs, Biddy, Laces Out, Dan, Beaver Boy, C-Spin, Thomas Smith, Nicola, Munch Makuchi, Leroy Westrich, Evolva, Sean Ramos, DB Cooper, Stud Still Smash, Brant Hewitt, Gabe, Dan Fuselman, Fuzzy 99, Decoy Man, a dude named Adam, John Jameson, Wyatt the Surgeon who's not a Surgeon Row, Blaine the Hoagie who's not a Hoagie Man, Scary Terry, Bucky the Beagle Herder, Antonio Echeverria, Hega Waffle, High Plains Drifter, Esteban Navarro, K. Hatch, Timothy Joe Stone, Chris Williams, Oroku Saki's Gardener, Cody Richardson, General Fury, and Boys on the Roof, Current Remember the Game, Hall of Famer Mark McHugh, James Juan Francesco, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Matt Hamilton, Daniel DeVore, Drugs of Venom, K. Sam Carpenter, Donnie the Dude, Walter, Nerdy Hybrid, Adam Fletcher, Colin Bollinger, Sleepy It. Damn it, I was doing so good. Sleeper hit. Joey Mercury, Squeak Nuts, Zayas, Timmy the Exuberant Turtle, Brian Neese, Christian Gabriel, Maverick Marty, Musty Beetle, Bud Lightyear, John M. Watkins, Timothy Zabrinsky, Beef Dingleberry, Michael Barjudina, Hitchy Poo, Arctic Vision, Pulma Simp, Mark but not McHugh, Trevor McKee, Burt McLean, Twi- Quiet Place Queen, Cam Nelly 23, Zamato, Skiller Rudy, Chris Lovin, oh my god, it froze, Bobby Litton, Brandon Dezeba, Kia Pop Knife goes in, guts come out. Works for me, Heman Demon, Dakota Guy, Alexander Camps, Pizza De- Pizza Dude's got 30 seconds, Ryan Perry, Alex R, it's the Bigfoot, Graham. Lucas Valadez, Iggy Nutsuru, Mr. Papa Giorgio, Solomon Soto, Dark Sky Walter, Denton Van Zandt, Postman, West Gen, Nick Creature, Adam Martinette, Nafe, Dr. Nightmare 23, Kevin Monroe, Shorzy, B Cuz 19, Digital Dave, Lord Longrod, Von Hugendom the second, Frosty Bear, Max Sandin, Sour Goat Face, Alexis Ramos, Fate of Sufferance, Tristan Anderson, Benjamin Atkins, Robbie DLC, Ryan Maurice, B, B Money, Hired Goons, who? Brandon Helm Heckle, it's OG, Tyler Bauer, Fallen, Snow Kiku, Deal Pickle, Rick, E Man, Trucker, Mark Sneed, that one kid, Josh, Raging Irish, Etriu, Wormwood, Agent Booty Pants, Shoeboxers, Adam Blank still hasn't reviewed Mario Galaxy, Jay Callahan, Robbie Air, Sabin, Brian Richmond, Devilish Saint, Blobby Rogers, Super Nintendo Chalmers, Glue Scappin, Bula, CJ Knoll, Matt Zeus, Buy Me Bone Storm, Plow King, Caesar. <laughs> That's it's hard to switch into Barty's voice that fast. Cesar, uh Picanet, Philip Mamouf Wifarts, Louis or uh, Liquor Like Luigi, Robothin, Dick Whittles, and Cody Thompson. That was a pretty good fucking round of shoutouts, baby. Not bad at all. Thanks everybody. Love you guys. Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Goodbye. <laughs>